All right. Hello. Welcome this evening, everyone. Um, I am Al Kumar, one of the events coordinators here at Everlasting Life. Me and my brother Ali um, hooked up to do this um, very important, very serious discussion tonight on are we black people? So uh, we thought this discussion was, um, was going to be helpful for the larger community One, two, two. who don't have a clue as to what we are talking about. So we definitely plan to live stream this. We're asking that you please do not jump on your live streams for this um, discussion tonight. We will have DVDs available after this, and you will be able to also see it again on live after this, after tonight. But there are paid people who, who's online is paid to watch this. So just out of fairness to them, we ask that you do not live it to the general public. Just some important house rules. Um, so, I'm sure Taj Tariq Bay needs no introduction. So, uh, <laughs> oh, five minutes? Okay. Okay, well, I'll just still go over the house rules. Should I or should I wait? No, you can go over that. Okay, okay. So, he will. Now, I know that some of you guys in the room are not comfortable with the term debating. But I am. I don't think there's anything wrong with debating. I think that's how laws are made in a civilized society. They debate up on Capitol Hill all day, every day. And, you know, there's debating goes on. That's what, you know, makes the world go round. That's how rules are established, etc. When it's done correctly, when it's done respectfully in a civilized manner, then the outcome, regardless of the outcome, it could be helpful and beneficial to all involved, those who are debating as well as those who are taking in the information. So um, my brother, Edward X, is going to be debating Taj Tariq Bay on the subject, Are We Black People? Uh, and of course that he is for the terminology black and he's gonna go over why. And Taj is anti and he's gonna go over why for all of us. So um, debate rules. We want respectable commentating only. No stabs at one another aimed at personal degrading. No profane language, including the N-word, is to be used in any form. No interrupting the speaker who has the floor. No going over your allotted time. And just so everybody in the room understands, this is that's the one minute warning. That's time's up, okay? So those are your time mechanisms. You're taking it back to Africa. <laughs> um, let's see. No going over your the, a lot of time. Now the debaters, they have five minutes each for introductions, after which um, they, they each have 15 minutes each round for arguments and rebuttals, three rounds each, okay? And then after which they get additional five minutes for, um, um, what am I trying to say, at the end, okay? So they get five minutes to summary, I'm sorry, to sum up everything that they have discussed. Audience responsibilities. Please, family, no booing. Again, this is a civilized discussion tonight. No booing, no loud shouting out, interrupting the speakers. Hold your questions until the end of the debate. We all would have, we have 30 minutes at the end to get your questions and answers in. Um, so definitely write them down. Uh, and all we ask is to keep an open mind. I know a lot of you come in with, um, with your own favorites or your own way of thinking about tonight. But I just ask that we all just keep an open mind for both um, participants and what they have to say. After the five minute summary, we're gonna break for 10 minutes so the candidates just can have a time to come down and, and we're gonna take 10 minutes and then we'll come back for the question and answer session, which would be 30 minutes, okay? So that is it for me. 
Um, Brother Ali is going to come up. I know he had um, some things he wanted to say briefly to you guys, and then we'll get going. Makes it back. Our family. So we're going to go ahead and get this. 
intellectual rolling. <laughs> How's everybody? Um, I'm glad to see everybody today. So, how many conscious morals in the house? Yes. Everybody morals. Everybody morals. Some just not conscious of it. That's all. But you know, we going. You going. You going to see tonight that you that you are moral. So, respectfully, brother X. We let brother X go ahead and get this thing going. Peace, brother. Assalamualaikum, good brother. We were taught. We were taught by the wise men and women that preceded us in this world that we should begin everything and end everything in the name of our Creator, in the name of our ancestors. So I stand before you today in the name of our creator and our ancestors, understanding that if we are anything of value, anything of good, anything of consequence, it is because we stand on the shoulders of those that preceded us in this world's life. And so it is in their name that I greet you in the greeting words of peace. We say it in Arabic, assalamu alaikum. Uh, to the Moors, Islam. To the conscious people who say they are black, black power. <laughs> To the conscious community, Hotep, I got to try to greet everybody in their own greeting. Shalom. Shalom for the Hebrew Israelites. And what's up to the common man? So, are we black? You can go to the next slide. Ideologue. When we are students of truth, we should never be ideologues. Right. An ideologue is a person, let me read the exact definition, an adherent of an ideology, especially one who is uncompromising and dogmatic. And a lot of us in our community, we think that's cool. No, that is ignorance. Yes. That is ignorance. We should never be an ideologue. We should always be seekers of truth. And we should always challenge our previous held beliefs. That's how you grow. If you're not challenging your previous held beliefs, then you don't grow. And so if you say, I've been thinking like this for 30 years, that's not cool. Next slide. So we want to come from not an ideological basis, but I want to deal with linguistics, history, and law and allow the chips to fall where they may. See, and I had a conversation and I kind of anticipated the room being filled with fez wearing moors. Cause I'm a moor too. But I'm also black. And if you know history, it was a time when the Europeans used to call them blacker moors. Somebody said that's right. Okay. So we're going to deal with linguistics, history, and law. And when I take a position saying we're black, it's not an ideological position. And I anticipated the room being filled with more than somebody asked me, how would I feel? And I said, if you got a thousand people saying five times five equals 50, I'm comfortable with it because I'm standing on 25. So I anticipate learning, but we black. I anticipate at the end, the more is coming to me. In secret, I'm black. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> so, my name is Brother Edward. I can read and write seven languages. I can read and write Hebrew. I can read and write Arabic. I can read and write Aramaic. I can read and write Medunetta. I can read and write Latin. I can read and write Greek. And of course, I can read and write English. So, I'm not before you as a believer in a doctrine. And I don't want to be looked upon as a believer in a doctrine. I'm challenging a point from a perspective that I stand on as being historically accurate, linguistically accurate, and legally accurate. And so, I have one minute. I want to... Uh, say this last thing on this one minute about the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Since I'm in the presence of the Moors, and the Moors look at the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey as the forerunner to the prophet, and he was to, like uh, John the Baptist was to Jesus, 
Then let's go look at what the forerunner had to say. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah God. See, we can't be ideologues and believe that he's of God on this end, but he ain't on God on this end. The Honorable Marcus Garvey said, where is the black man's government? Where is his king and his kingdom? Where is his president, his country, his ambassador, his army, his navy, his men of bigger feds? I could not find them, and then I declared I will help to make them. So from the Honorable Marcus Garvey, the forerunner to the prophet, the John the Baptist, according to your own belief, he said he's black. Islam, Moses. Islam. 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 Remind me to the brother. Moors do say Islam. Islam. Now, the reason why you have um, Islam mainly because of the infiltration that took place with COINTELPRO operations and the pedophile, um, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, who set up the FBI, which is an order of Malta belonging to the Jesuits. That must be understood. Other deal, I used to be a sister minister in the Nation of Islam, so I have a whole background in it. Plus, I'm around the circles of many people that you all know. So like I'm sitting here eating with you, Muhammad Ali sit across my table eating with my family, holding Hannibal when he was a baby. So I already know by circles that those in power don't think or necessarily hold the positions in public that they hold on the down low. Now let me present to you all two keys, and, and you, you're right along with that, brother. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, whom we call the Lamb, is Elijah Paul Bay, a nationality card. And uh, you will find on your phone when you look up, you'll see him with his fez. His, they often hide that picture. He was an addict. Now, to be fair, because a lot of people misunderstand the Lamb, but the Lamb was preserving a lot of things that people assume he's taken an opposing position. He didn't take a, an opposing position. As a matter of fact, the Lamb never called our people black. He always referred to them as so-called blacks and so-called Negroes. And many people forget that. I'm going to give you two other keys with the actual facts that all brothers and sisters, MGT, and all fruit get. What is a Mason? The answer, a Mason is a Muslim son. He didn't say Muslim son, Muslim son. This was the key to the chambers. And then he also reminded the brothers and sisters, after all the studies that we do, after we go through the actual facts, etc., he said a supreme wisdom will be handed you later. Most of them never got the supreme wisdom because a lamb also had to run for his life. That's another part of the history in the nation that they don't talk about. So a lot of times the lamb would go to Arizona, you know, because he had um, respiratory problems, but uh, really many times he's running for his life. You know, so a lot of people don't know that and a lot of people don't talk about that. Are we clear? Um, the Moorish movement was infiltrated. Um, the Nation of Islam is the actually the Temple of Allah which is a part of the Moorish movement. So when we're talking about the Moorish movement, the Nation of Islam is the Moorish movement. So let's get that very clear. Now, for those of you who have scholarship, and you'll see some of the personal correspondence of Nobu Dwali, including when he visited uh, Marcus Garvey when they had him in prison um, in Atlanta, including some of his postcards to his wife, Pearl. And you'll see that Marcus Garvey, um, Father Divine, Bishop Johnson, Bishop Cherry, Daddy Grace, all of them had this knowledge and information. This is why you see all of your so-called major black organizations have their root between 1930 and 34. That period is called 
the great sellout. So the deal of it is, I'm, I'm just, I'm honored to have with Brother Edward with us today, and I'm glad he's a historian. And understand, we, from the Nation of Islam, because I'm still, that's how I came, you understand? Now, but I grew, you know, and I know that a lot of people think, look at, they want to see schism. But we don't do schism. Nation of Islam, we don't debate, we deal with knowledge. More Science Temple, we deal with knowledge. With Great Seal, we deal with knowledge. And we share knowledge with you. And with history, etymology is the history of linguistics. And it's used all around the world. And I'm glad the brother mm -hmm. introduced you to that rule. So etymon and etymology, that's the history of words, the true meaning of words, and the morphology of words. I'll be clear. And ain't nothing more than black. Just misplaced. <laughs> so, second round, how much time we got? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I'm going to try to uh, do a Mike Tyson. You remember back in 89, Mike Tyson come out 15 minutes was too long. <laughs> when we deal with linguistics, history, and law on the term black, is it an ideological claim or is it a historical fact? When we look at history, we can't close our eyes and put our fingers in our ears when we are confronted with the truth. So I want to just do a chronological history of some nations where we were in charge. And if we start with Kemet, Kemet, I want to start with Kemet. And Dr. John Henry Clark said we start with Kemet, not because this is where civilization started at. No, but this is where our indestructible monuments still remain. So we want to use Kemet as a starting point. And Kemet, you might know it as Egypt. Egypt, Northeast Africa. Kemet is the original name. English, the, Egypt is an English term that came from the Greek term, Aeptus. But the original term, the people who lived there never called themselves Egyptians, and they never called their country Egypt. They called themselves Kemetu and called their country Kemet. And in Medunetta, Medunetta means the word of God, and the Greeks called it hieroglyphics. But from the perspective of the people in Kemet, there is no such thing as hieroglyphics because this is a Greek terminology and we practice kuchichakali, we practice self-determination. So the people in Kemet, there was no Egypt, there was no Ayeptus. To them, it was Kemet. And Kemet was represented in pictograph by a charred piece of wood that represented the unilateral K, Oka. And then the owl represented the unilateral M. And the loaf of bread represented the unilateral T, Kemet. And the determinative didn't represent anything, didn't have any sound, uh, phonetic value, but it represented a nation. And Kemet means land of the black. And you know, Eurocentric scholarship said, well, you know, yeah, Kemet does mean land of the blacks, but they weren't talking about the people, they were talking about the soil. Okay, we'll let you rest on that for now. But we went to study Medunetta. Now we can read and write the language. Not only did they use the charred piece of wood to represent their nation, they also used it to represent themselves and called themselves Kemetu. Kemetu as if Kemet mean land of the blacks. Commit to is like I'm black too. Commit to. And this is what they call themselves. And so we can't dumb down ourselves because of an ideological claim. Kemet really existed. Linguistically, it means land of the black. Commit to, where the people that live there, commit to mean black people. You can't dumb yourself down and close your eyes to the facts. This is not an ideological claim. This is a historical fact. Was Kemet a real place? Were the people of Kemet real? Did they have a language? Do we honor their language? Because if we say that we, whatever our ancestors were, we are without doubt a contradiction, but when it goes against our ideology, we ain't that no more. 
Kemet is a real place. Kemet means 5,000, 6,000 years ago, it meant land of the blacks. Guess what it means today? Land of the blacks. And this is a linguistic fact. So are we black people? Did we refer to ourselves as black? Because these names were given to slaveholders. That's not true. That's a religious term. Thousands of years ago, we called ourselves black. Next slide. Commit to the people. Next slide. I can't even see this, but it was with old <laughs> man Kush from the Moore Science Temple. I, I, went, I went and studied. I studied not only the Circle 7, the Holy Quran, or the Moore Science Temple. I studied the questionnaire 101. I've been studying the Moore Science Temple for 25 years. So it ain't just a claim that I just reject uh, 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 the ideology. I'm, I'm rejecting it based upon the study of history. I'm not an ideologue. And we refer to ourselves as black. I want to read this last thing. I can even see it on this presentation, but y'all know what it is. Whatever your forefathers were, you are without doubt a contradiction. If your forefathers were in Kemet, you gonna, you gonna shut your brain down and say, well, I ain't black. Mm -hmm. Because of an ideological claim. Next slide. I can read it if you want. You don't gotta read it. They, the Moors know. The Moors in this, and right now saying in their mind, you got us on that point. That, that's only one point, I got 99 more. <laughs> Ham. Old man Ham, that's what the Moors call him, old man Ham. You know, I, you know the relationship with Cushion, old man Ham. I was just studying that last night. I said, well, you can't deny this. Ham mean black in Hebrew. Then and now, and I was reading, y'all believe in the Hamites, black people. Yeah, you were shut your, shut, see how you see, see, see when we confronted with this truth? Our reason, our logic, our faculty shut down because we experienced cognitive dissonance. In Hebrew, there is no such thing as Ham because Noble Dwali was raised up by our, the great God Allah to redeem fallen humanity. Allah don't make no mistakes. In Hebrew, there's no such thing as Ham. It's Cam, just like Kemet, and mean black. Then and now. And you can't say we're the descendants of Ham, which is Cam, which means black, and then say I'm not black. Linguistically, I got to keep them linguistics in your face because it's like a child saying, I don't believe one plus one equal two. That means you flunk the class. That don't mean you smart. That don't mean you sharp. That don't mean you right. That means you flunk. That means you fail because you reject the facts. Next slide. Cush means black. We just went over that. Cushy. I ain't talking about good cush and alcohol. I'm talking about the people. Cush. Cushy means black today. In modern Hebrew, they have different forms of Hebrew, and I can read all of them. They have Paleo-Hebrew. They have what is called Biblical Hebrew, and they have what is called Modern Hebrew. In Modern Hebrew, Cush means black right now. Next slide. I'm just gonna bombard you with this historical, linguistic, legal blackness. <laughs> Al Arab Al Ariba wa Al Arab Mustabi. Al Arab Al Ariba means the Arab eyes, I mean the, the original Arabian Arabs. These are the first group. And Al Arab Mustabiba means the Arab eyes Arab. And in history, they said these are the group of people that came after Ishmael. But Ibn Mansur, Ibn Mansur wrote Lisan Al Arab. It is the most authoritative Arabic lexicon in the world. And guess what, guess what, guess what else to say? I don't believe in that. And as if that changes the merit, because you don't believe it, or you don't believe it, or I don't believe it. That doesn't change the fact. Lisan al-Arab is the most authoritative classical Arabic lexicon in the world. And if a man so often, he says, Notes the opinion that the phrase Aswar al Jilda, black skin, automatically meant Khalis al Arab, the pure Arabs, and, and applied to al Arab al Ariba because the color of most of the Arabs is al Utma, dark. So the original Arabs are called Aswar al Jilda, black skin, in Arabic, 
classical Arabic. And I know what some of us are going to say because we experience cognitive dissonance. And somebody will push you out your boat, and now you're beginning to sink. And you can't stand up ideologically, and you're sinking, and you're going down, and you're going to shut your mind down to the facts. In Medunetta, we were black. In Hebrew, we were black. In Arabic, we were black. I ain't even got to Greek and Latin yet. I just want to stick with the facts. I ain't coming up here to kind of uh, uh, pluck up. I'm not even up here representing the teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, that ain't the debate. The debate is are we black? That's the debate. The debate ain't did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wear no face. The debate ain't was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ever remember. I'm not arguing that, even though I can't argue that. The argument is are we black? And can I give you reference? I can give you so many references that we were black. It's not a belief system. It's not a theory. It's not conjecture. It's historical fact. It's linguistic fact. It's legal facts. Next slide. Oh, Sudan mean black. Come from the Arabic is based on a triliteral root. Arabic is based upon a triliteral root. Three letters. So the triliteral root, seen, wild, and dal, is the root letters for the word Sudan. But Seeing wild and valid means black. This is where the word aswad come from. With the same triliteral root. This is where aswad jilda come from. Black skin, the same triliteral root. Sudan, right now, in Arabic, means black. And it was a time when they used to call Ghana, Mali, and Songhei, the Western Sudan. They used to call it Bilad al-Sudan. Land of the blacks in Arabic. So you, can, we, you know we'll say we'll try to attack the European language. This is English, and English means this. And I ain't talking about. I ain't got to English yet. Y'all spoke Arabic, didn't you? You could say you ain't speak Arabic too. You ain't speak Hebrew either. You ain't speak Metanetta either. Now you in an intellectual corner, and I got you. I'm gonna keep you in that intellectual corner. Hold you up in the intellectual corner. We were black. I wasn't fair. I said, how many more is going to be here? This, this is a pleasure. <laughs> you ain't going to be talking strong with that black piece no more. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> Saudi means black. Because it got the same triliteral root. Seen, wild, down. Saudi Arabia means black Arabia right now. Y'all making me mad. <laughs> Saudi means black. Kush means black. Cam means black. Kemet means black. Next slide. Al Hijja Al Aswa, the black stone. Black. So when you say black, you're going to come, come with a Eurocentric twist. We practice Kooji chocolate. We practice self-determination. Don't come telling me what the pecker would say black mean. I'm not talking about what he talking about. When I say you black, I'm talking about you the first man and woman on the earth. When I say you black, I say I mean you're powerful. It was Minister Malcolm X said every Negro has the potential to be black. So when I say you black, black according to science means death. Who science? Who science you talking about? Because the science I'm talking about, black mean power. That's why the judge wear black. Black mean power. That's why you go to Mecca and bow down and kiss a black rock. So I don't know what you're talking about when you say black according to science means death. Where? The universe is black. The God that I believe in is black. See, we can't come under this Eurocentric mentality in the name of liberation and begin to articulate white folk. And it's what is amazing to me about the more science temple, well, they will argue you can't be black, but then they turn around and say a free white person. Them, them the Moors. You can be white though. White means purity, and purity means God, and God means rule of the land. This is Eurocentricism. But black is death. So even though you, we can't promote this type of Eurocentric thinking, the Moors say, the Moors say them. Brother Edward kind of know that book. <laughs> Brother Edward been studying. See, I'm not a person. When I've been hearing for 25 years that we're Moors, right? 
I don't just reject that claim off a religious premise. So I want to know, am I a more? This brother said the noble draw he was raised by the great God Allah to redeem and fall to humanity and teach us love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I want to know. I want to know the truth. I'm not here to defend the ideology. I'm coming out strong because I ain't got nothing to defend but the truth. All right. I ain't thinking. I'm strong with this. We black. We are black. We are black. That's all I got to say. Next man. <laughs> Linguistically, scholars do the research, dealing in the Urdu, etc., Persic. Um, Arab is not a bloodline or identity, it actually means noble. It's a term of social position, not a people. That's number one. Number two, to keep it elementary, we always try to keep it simple. And for any of you in here, that know how to read. The fundamentals, fundamentals, this is fundamental stuff. Of dealing with language, you go into a dictionary, and this is child, this is third grade stuff. Excuse me. Oh, thank you for your technical skills and abilities. <laughs> um, as an example, um, you have general eight parts of speech, then you got your, your nine principle, you know, interjection. Now, Blacks an adjective, it is not a debate that our people have been called black. Now when the prophets say that black according to science means death, he's not talking etymological, he's talking sociological. Because the term, which I agree with him, it's a term, it's not a bloodline nor pedigree. Now everything down, you can make reference. So when you're dealing with black and you can look in the dictionary, you'll see it's an adjective. An adjective describes and it harmonizes exactly what he's saying. It's a term of description. It's not a bloodline nor pedigree. Are we clear? Yeah. That's what must be understood. The tagging of black has nothing to do with color because black does not mean dark. It means pale colors. That's what it means. It comes from Old High German down to Middle English, 1100 to 1500, write it down, go do the research yourself. Basic, basic etymology, which is the history of words. All right? So we're talking long history. Furthermore, the Europeans, i.e. the Germanic tribes, all European tribes are Germanic. They're all German. All right? And they're essentially hybrids. And um, so when you're talking to Frenchmen, Englishmen, etc., is still talking to Germans. Are we clear? Europeans didn't call themselves white people to roughly around 1854. You'll find this information with the Naturalization Act with Ulysses S. Grant. Um, when they modified the Naturalization Act uh, from 1790 to 1870, this is where, when you see in your Black's Law Dictionary, when the Europeans under the Wigglemore Party, um, agreed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to call themselves white people because it's a legal status having nothing to do with complexion. The whole argument of skin complexion comes with a code system of social controls, has nothing to do with reality because not one of you in here is black if you think it means ebony, which it doesn't. And none of you are paleolith, which is what black means. Are we clear? Now, any of you doubt it, and any, uh, um, we can share this dictionary um, while we're doing this work up here. Anybody that has any doubts can pass this around and look up black, you see adjective, go in the appendix, and you'll see it comes from Old High German, and it actually means pale color, so I'll be clear. So the European is the black man. It has nothing to do with his complexion either. It has to do with Negro, Yabera, Arebo, black chimpanzee, monkey, that's how the word Negro came into the language. When you see uh, Charles Darwin and the other German naturalists talking about um, the evolution of man from monkey, man didn't evolve from monkey, 
monkey was used in experiments in Patagonia. I, people are familiar with Dr. Moreau's Island. And Dr. Moreau, that's French for more. And it's also referred to as Dr. Yaku. And this is uh, Patagonia, which you now know as Argentina. This is why when, you, when Hitler told them to, uh, to split, you know, frog feet, blow some balloons up, you know, get a log, but party's over, you're leaving here, going home to your mother, to your na nation, because they're going to save Germany. It's after the Treaty of Versailles, because Germany could not hold a uh, standing army. And so people were in there using a uh, dogma, name, claiming to be Jews who were not Jews, no J in Hebrew, no J in Aramaic, no J in Arabic, none of the, what they will call, the Semitic languages, which is a term made up by Germans to describe a Moabite, Canaanite, Hittite language family. And that's a modern term too, because there's no such thing as that either. Then when you do the research you, into Europe, you'll see that all uh, the Picts, the Moors, and the Dubs are all Moors. Europeans themselves will tell you that. You know, it's not a secret. You know, so uh, one of the most awarded scholars, Joel A. Rogers, He'll even give you European history, and you can go to Europeans themselves and go into European history, and they'll show you Moors in all of their coats of arms. This is no secret whatsoever. Black is a term, not a bloodline or an identity. The problem that people have is that they keep confusing it as an identity, and people who have fallen in love with it have been uh, presenting it as an identity, which it is not, as an example. Um, Spanish, no such thing as Latin on uh, Spanish. You know, it's Moorish Latin, right? Um, and I'm agreeing with him. It was common knowledge amongst Asiatics or the Arabs, which means the nobles, not a bloodline. So all Asiatic Africans were referred to generally as, as Arabs, which means the nobles. Are we clear? And it doesn't mean black, it means the nobles. All right? Um, so the nobles were the skilled ones. So you'll see in movies like uh, the Europeans will tell you, like in Wild Wild West with Will Smith, and the guy's walking in this spider, that's symbolic. And they're up in, in this plane, he says, you look like a handsome black or more. But the black is the pejorative. And you'll go in that same dictionary, and you'll see the adjective is separated from the more. The adjective is all even letters, and then the more is capitalized because that's the proper noun. It's no secret. Anybody who can read, you know, when you're dealing, and this is one of the reasons why um, the Kenyan Moor, Barack H. Obama, went to Hikukta, which we call Tamari, also Kemet, is where you get Pata, P T A H, Hikukta, what you call Egypt, Hikukta, and it's not just there, it's also the Grand Canyon, also down to Lower Egypt, which is Kentucky. In Tennessee, huh? and we got older pyramids here than we got on that side, and everybody in the world knows it. Now, so when you even when you're dealing with um, one of your most respected Masonic scholars, Manly P. Hall, who never went through a lodge, they make all the connections. The only ones that don't make the connections is those who are pushing the Spanish Inquisition for European conquest of the world. Are we clear? Now. Uh, 1854, Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, Oath, 1854, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where they do what they call the Mummers Parade, and then they put the charcoal on their face, they call it black face. However, they're black people. Do you understand? What they would do is take someone else's identity, do things to other people, start wars, and then they would uh, play both sides and they play it right to the day. It's called, it's called false flags. They don't even change it. They do it absolutely today. But for those of you who may be confused, and I'm glad that you know he's talking about um, linguistics, because if you're talking history and you're talking law, go right in your law dictionary, and you'll see free white people does not mean Caucasian race. And so when we're calling them white people, we just call them sovereign, because it's a status. It's not the color code system. People need to know the difference between uh, pedigrees, terms, Bloodlines, ETC. You need to know the difference between adjectives and nouns. Are we clear? Blacks and adjectives. In any language, it'll tell you that. As a matter of fact, we were just talking on the way up here, right? Um, uh, where was that? Um, 
30th and Walnut. We came in there, you know, because we know what's up. So when we come in there, Minister Farrakhan, as soon as we came in there, we gave him greetings, etc. cetera, assalamu alaikum, et cetera. And he says, negro sabato, black. He said, when you're talking black, you're talking things, objects. So negro sabato means black shoe. But when you're talking about humans, you're talking moors. We're all moors, Minister Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. So they all know. It's not a secret. You know, you see Elijah Poole Bay, where it says you'll find it in the phone, etc. You know, but they never give them the science because that's the supreme wisdom. That, that's when you go into the culture. So when you go into dogma, you go into symbology. You go into imagery. You know, looking Christian, looking Muslim, looking Buddhist. But the knowledge is not there. Are we clear? The science of the operations of the planet is not there. That's where your problem is. Are we clear? So logistics, write that down. That goes in every science whatsoever. And since we're dealing with communication, <laughs> the science of language is called etymology. And black has nothing to do with complexion, period. Are we clear? It has to do sociologically as applied pejoratively as a caste status. Are we clear? So you're not talking skin color. Are we clear? Yeah. When you're talking white, sociologically, you're not talking skin complexion. Are we clear? Yes. All right, so when you're talking about the human family, you're talking anthropology. And so you're talking about extended families. So you talk about nations, nationalities, coming from nativity, which means to be brought into life, to be born. And every man has a belly button. There's no such thing as woman coming from some man's rib. Every man came from a woman's womb, so get that straight, right from the door. And it ain't no man on this planet greater than a woman. I don't care how much must seals you have. <laughs> so all nations are guided by the knowledge of woman, which is why our women have always been under attack. Once they got you, they got us. And this whole game with the black game was to remove you from your history from your sovereign right to the land, all be clear, under the Spanish Inquisition. The entire world's modern politics is predicated on the Spanish Inquisition against the Moors, and Spanish was a tag that was put on the Moors to cover up the history. You can ask any Filipino and about Pope, Pope Phil, I mean, uh, uh, Philip II, and they'll tell you we're Moros. They started calling them Filipinos in the 1500s. Right. Ain't no such thing as Puerto Ricans. That's Boricain. They're Tainos. They're Moors. Are we clear? Ottawa, right. when you're talking about um, Haiti, when you're talking about Trinidad, all the islands, they're Carib Moors. They're Moors. They're home. They're Al Moroccans, Americans. Distinguished from Europeans who've been imitating you going around the world doing things in your name, tagging you with brand systems to disconnect you from your land, your inheritance, and this is what the black game is all about. It's a sociological system having nothing to do with complexion. So when Nodrali says black according to science means death, he's talking about <coughs> heritability. This is why when you see uh, what we presented to you, the Dungy case, to put it in context, like some of you are, who are younger, right? And, and yourself says, you know, you hear about grandpa and, and your great uncle. If you call them black, you had a fight. You need to know why. It was, they wasn't talking about skin color. They were talking about estate. They branded you. The next thing, they were stealing your estate. And then lynching you and stealing your land. It's pejorative. It's to remove you from the human family to justify Doctrine of discovery and unum sanctum operations where the European claimed to be God. That's why he took on the white title, because it means sovereign <laughs> ruler of the land. We ain't talking complexion. Are we clear? Yes, so that must be understood. Black's a term, not a bloodline. And you don't mix the two. Are we clear? Yes, All right. I don't even need no more minutes for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I've been having this conversation with uh, people uh, who are members of the Moore Science Temple of America for like 25 years. And these conversations are always enlightening for me because I approach life as a student. And so I'm always learning, even if I'm learning ways to crush your argument. When you say, when you try to use Eurocentric law to justify not being black, and you try to talk about how black is something negative, you're using, you're legitimizing, you're referencing the oppressor. So everything that he does or says is always going to be against you, even if it's Moorish. He's going to come with a spin. And it's amazing. One of the greatest things that you can learn or study is linguistics or language. Because the reason why I'm saying that is because all of the arguments that the Moors use, you can just flip them around and use them right back against them. We're not black. Black is an adjective. Moorish is an adjective. You didn't know that? Moorish scientist? Oh, yeah. That's an adjective. Yes, references. So, so we can reference ourselves off of adjectives. You just were using black as an adjective, so you can't reference it, but we can be Moorish scientists. Linguistics is key. When you talk about international law, you're talking about white folk. You're legitimizing white folks. When you talk about uh, uh, 1913, you, you all men must proclaim their nationality to be recognized, to know that they're not black, Negro, colored people, Ethiopian. Let's look at that. In 1913, Asia, Africa, and Latin America was suffering <laughs> under European colonialism. So when, who are you going to be recognized by? The civilized nations, the free nations, the white folk. The League of Nations, the white folks. What? Because Africa was suffering from colonialism. Latin America was suffering from colonialism. Asia was suffering from colonialism. Who are you trying to be recognized by? Talk about international law. If, if you call yourself black, black is non-descendable. I've been studying you. <laughs> black is non-descendable. You're talking about international law. Who made international law? White folk. When the law is on their side, they enforce it. When it's against them, they break it. International law, they needed the United Nations to invade Iraq. George Bush said, you are either with us or you with the terrorists. Yeah. International law didn't mean a thing. Since the occupation of the West Bank in 1967, Numerous United Nations resolutions, including House, I mean, United Nations Resolution 446, United Nations Resolution 452, United Nations Resolution 465, United Nations Resolution 471, and United Nations Resolution 476 affirm unambiguously that Israel's occupation is illegal, and since Resolution 446 adopted on March 22nd, 1979, the United Nations ruled that the occupation of Israel is illegal. So international law don't mean nothing when it's against white folk. Only time they use it when it's against you, when you write. We write on reparations, that's international law. Why we ain't get no reparations? Because international law don't apply to us. We got to unify and organize ourselves and stop looking for white acceptance. And, you know, when you say, well, you call yourself black, that's why we can't re receive no freedom. Well, damn, you don't call yourself black. You, well, you're 40 acres in a mule. You ain't received no equal justice under the law. You ain't see, received no preferential treatment. You ain't received nothing different than the ignorant, backward person who don't know his nationality. You suffering the same thing that Mook, Mook, Ray, Ray, and Little Man suffer. You just wear feds. <laughs> He said, there's no J in Arabic. That's not true. Gene, hence the word Juma, every Friday. Because on a Friday, the first man was born in the flesh. Right? Uh, Jolly Bear, Jahan, Jeddah. So there is a J in Arabic. I just wanted to make that linguistic correction. Next slide. We can't be black because we're Moors. And Moor is our original title. Moor is our real title. Moor is who we really are as a people. That's what they tell us. The word Moor, that's an English word, 
English is a bastard language. More is, an English, is not an indigenous African word. It's an English word. It comes from the Latin word, moros. I mean, uh, uh, mor mora. It comes from the Greek word, moros. Mu, alpha, epsilon, rho, and omicron. More is a Greek word that means black. <gasps> You're not black because you moors, but more linguistically mean black. Cognitive dissonance. More means black right now. See, you can come with a religious ideology arguing linguistical facts. More means black right now. When, you, when they call us black or more, it meant black, black. And you arguing from a Eurocentric construct because they made everything negative, and so we internalized their perspective, so now black means negative to us. And white means something good. What name does Satan give himself? That would know what you all the action. And then right behind that, he said, what does white mean? What name does Satan give himself? What does white mean? White means purity, a, 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 a ruler of the land, a ruler of me, you know how I go, God. But he told, he giving you science. He couldn't talk like that in 1913. Stop flashing your cards at Europeans, it causes confusion. He couldn't talk like that. But he gave you science. What name does Satan give himself? And then right behind that, you talk about white, right? And then you're going to say, go to the next slide, because I got, I got this black law. I've been studying this black law dictionary, because I knew he was going to come with that. What does white mean according to the black law dictionary? Free white person. Free white person refers to in the Naturalization Act as amended by Act. And I thank you, I thank Allah for you, because you helped me with this. I said, he just gave me an extra clip with bullets in it to debate me. As amended by Act July 14, 1870, has meaning nat naturally given to it when first used in one stat, 103 section C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European races then commonly <coughs> counted as white, and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. It includes all European Jews, more or less intermixed with people of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. It includes, I don't even know how to pronounce this word, Magia, Magars, Magars Laps, and Finns, and Basque, and Al Albanians. It includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants. So you can't be black, but you're a white boy. According to the Black Law Dictionary, you can't be black, but you're a white boy. You're a free white boy. That's deep. We're talking about self-hatred on the most major levels coming from the conscious community. You can't be black. You got all type. Legally, you can't be black. But legally, you can't be white. That is deep. That's so deep on a psychological level that we have to question ourselves. See, if you say you can be white too, I can kind of go rest with you can't be black. Because black is an adjective that describes the noun. But the yellow man, the Chinese, they call himself yellow. He don't, you think they got to meet some of Man, we ain't yellow. And when yellow calling the size mean death. And we couldn't call, they said, well, yellow power. They told me, y'all, y'all, y'all think, oh, y'all ain't know in the 60s, the brown barrettes. Talking about brown power, rolling with the, oh, y'all, that was ready for y'all. Y'all talking about these adjectives. All people do that. The white man say want white power. Huh? The red man say want red power. That's why he offended by the Washington Redskins thing. Right? Because he said that's racist and it's insulting. The red, the, the adjective that describes the name. See, now we know lingua. You can't hit us with that no more. Show me a country with, 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 with black land. Kill me. Kill me. Show me a black flag. I, oh, oh, you know how y'all make mockery of the country. Yes, what is that? A rope spray? <laughs> you can tell I've been around the world a long time. I done heard all those arguments. 
And I thank Allah for the moral science temple because y'all, Noble Juali was the first one to bring Islam to America for us and our community. So I thank Allah for him in that. But as an intellectual, as a critical thinker, as an analytical thinker, I'm smart enough not to throw the baby out with the bath water, but you ain't great. Get me to drink that bath water. I can't drink no bath water. We black people. We've always been black people. Kemet mean black. Kush mean black. Cam mean black. Saudi mean black. Aswa mean black. How many points do we have to go? We can't be black, colored, Negro, or Ethiopian. We can't be Ethiopian. There's a real nation on earth called Ethiopia. And they have a vote in the United Nations. So the people in Ethiopia, I mean Ethiopia, aren't Ethiopians? Cognitive dissonance. Because we uphold the ideology. And you don't want to, because if you say they are Ethiopians, then you got to put down your ideology. You can't have it both ways now. You can't be colored black, Negro, or Ethiopian, but them are Ethiopians. When you go in the store, them Ethiopians, they speak to, to Greenia. They're from Ethiopia. They speak Amharic. They're from Ethiopia. They're Ethiopians. And Ethiopia does not linguistically mean divided. Now, in what language does Ethiopia mean that? Because we do, and we should all agree that Noble Dwali wasn't no linguist. In what language do Ethiopia means divided? Water. Where? Because Ethiopia comes from the Greek word ethiops, which means burnt face. See how cognitive this is? I'm going to keep that in your face. I'm going to keep it in your face the next time you come promoting the ideology. When you come promoting the ideology, you got to come with some science and some facts. Not no ideology. It's 2019. Black folk are too smart for religious dogma. It don't work. It don't work. We're too smart. We're too critical in our analyzation. It's not going to work. I want to go over a couple of more key points. And I hope that we have a question to answer. I want the more to ask me the hardest question. Ask me that question you've been wanting to ask for 20 years. I want them hard questions. Don't hold it. Don't pull no punches or anything. And I want you to look up the information. And if the information is against you, don't feel bad. Embrace it. Grow from it. Grow from the truth. We should grow as a community from truth. We shouldn't run from the truth. We, we, we act like roaches when you spread the black flag. <laughs> when you spread it, roaches, we run from truth. We run from truth to uphold an ideology. The simple fact remains, I want to talk to you personally. How can you deny Kemet being a real place with real people and then say, I'm not black? You can't reconcile those two points. You have to say, we were black or deny that history. And if you deny that history, that says something about you. That says something about you that you in denial. It was good for 1913. We just come out of slavery in 1865. We ain't know nothing. The, if you look at the social conditions of our people, we couldn't read and write. The context of our people, we went to church. That's why Noble Juali kept the Sunday school, because we was familiar with that. Right? And it familiarized us with a, a, a something called Islam that we never heard of. And then he talked talk, talk, talk about fezes. And he gave us a sense of pride and a sense of culture and a sense of understanding, which is good. I'm not against that. That is great. But when you start talking about the letter of the law, I'm with the spirit of the law. I ain't with the letter of the law. I'm with the letter. Okay, in this last minute, let me say this. Y'all know y'all say that flag 10,000 years old. The green five-pointed star that represents love, <coughs> truth, peace, freedom, and justice. That's not true. The Moorish flag was a red flag. The green five-pointed star was added in 1914 by the Moroccan government. Peace out. I'm going to say again, we're not talking skin complexion. When you're talking Ethiopians, you talk to Ethiopians, not talk to people around the world. Um, Europeans use the term, they use Habasha, and also Abyssinia. They're simply talking about the dividing of the, ha the land between Ham and Kush. That's where the, the term Ethiopia 
has. Not, we're not talking about etymological meaning, we're talking about land areas, that's all. So when you talk to uh, people from Habashat, that's who you call Ethiopians, talk to them yourself, they'll tell you. Now, in relationship um, to um, free white persons, so we'll go to the law dictionary. Can you put it back up on the screen? Because I appreciate the brother, but he conveniently left out key parts. Come on, teacher. You know, because it, you know, trying to make that argument. Now, when you're, when you're talking to Europeans, you know, they know that it's a legal status. And as a matter of fact, you know, when they're talking red people, and you don't see this other thing, you, also, you don't see Manchurians calling themselves yellow people. You know, they do not, the only people that play that, you know, crayon game are people here, Europeans, and the familiars and conversos amongst them. Conversos are Moors and Yahudi. And when I say there's no J in Aramaic, we talk about the sound. So when you would say, um, like, Jalabu, you know, you would say Jalabu. You know, there's no like J. The hard J wasn't used even in language until around 1500 with some of the priests, and then around 1700s in language in general. That's what I'm making reference to. That's fact. Do the research. You know, um, and again, what what you'll see is the psychology of keep associating the word black with skin color and acting like there's a rejection of it. There's not a rejection of the word. It's called misclassification and disassociation. In law, in propria persona is the principle of being yourself. Meaning that if a Chinese start calling himself yellow man before anybody in the civilized world, fact, he loses his birthright. Are we clear? Because yeah. yes, sure. we're not talking about skin color. You're talking about heritability. You're talking about pedigree, bloodline. When you're talking in any culture, they say honor your mothers and, and your fathers that because your inheritance is there. The preservation of nation states is in your pedigree. Your pedigree is what nationality is, are we clear? Yeah. And the other deal of it is um, when you go into um, ancient uh, Canaanite Moabite uh, history, particularly in South America, you'll see um, the, the last high priest of the ancient Moabite nation, which was actually um, a matriarchy. The last high priest, Mor Luak and Il. This is where you see M-U-U-R and M-O-O-R, including in the ancient world, the O was considered sacred. And so a lot of times you would uh, substitute it with the U. Now, and, it, and this is again from an added lesson. This is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, you know, what is a Mason? A Mason is a Muslim son but yet, the brothers and sisters refer to themselves as Muslims. You understand? But he's still sending them a message. You get the point? And then you go into the Renaissance. And the Renaissance, you'll see the jurisprudence that he's dismissing, respectfully, as the white man's. It is the white man's. It's the status. Now, you, for, for those of you who deal with people around the nations, around the world, you'll find that people from Asia and Africa that come to North America, if, they're, if, they, if they know that you're not hung up with this black thing, you let them, see, let them show you their passport and have white on it. It's a status, it's not their complexion. And one of the hardest things to do is to get our people to recognize, stop getting hung up in your self-hatred of this skin game. It's not about your complexion, it's about your legal status, distinguished from your lawful status. You know, I want to make that point, because people keep misrepresenting what the prophet's saying. And I want to make that clear, because there's an assumption that the position is dogmatic. It's not dogmatic. More science distinguished from dogmata. Now, when you go into Adam Chamber, just like in the nation, like the, pro, uh, like the land was saying, you know, after you go through your actual facts, he said, supreme wisdom will be handed you later. And when you're talking to the ministers, like in private, they're talking more science. And it's no secret. I mean, it's never been a secret, except when you come out to the masses, they will just say so-called black because the people didn't want it yet, if you get the point. But they were being prepared for it. That's what their lessons were. You know, it's no big secret. 
you know, even like when we, you know, when we go down to Kentucky, you know, do lectures, you know, Muhammad Ali's brother, you know, make sure we have lectures right around the corner from the house and we go visit them and stuff like that. They all know us. It's, it's not a secret. What I see is people getting hung up with, uh, oh, you see your, your shoe? That means black. And that yellow hook right there in your hand, that really means black too. And those earrings you got, the hoops and stuff, that means black too. But the camera, that means black. You know, and that picture on the wall, that means black. You're talking about a dictionary, every word means black. You don't have all these, you don't have a lot of words having one, any word has a meaning. It has a mother. It's an etymon. Now, when it, when it comes to Moorish, when you deal with uh, prefix and suffix, you change a noun to an adjective, which is logical. You know, just like you would say, you know, French. You know, French, so France, right, or Frankish, then your then you're adjective. You know, this is back to fundamental linguistics. Prefixes and suffixes change the classifications of words. That's third grade grammar. It's not confusing. You know, and this is why we present to you these fundamentals, because people keep on playing this self-hatred game, but the real deal of it is, this is the whole deal. And one of the reasons we gave you the Dungey case, because it puts it in perspective. Now on the back, and, 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 and supporting what the uh, brother says, <coughs> law and history goes together. That is true. This is why in the nation and the Moorish Science Temple, law and history is taught together, because that is a fact. So what you find is that um, whether you're dealing with some of the brothers and sisters in any organization, whether it's the Moorish Science Temple of America or the Nation of Islam, what I've discovered in my travels is that many of the masses of the people really don't ever get them supreme lessons. They don't ever get those out of degrees. They, most of them, stay in the dogma, which is why we're always debating and arguing. You don't need to argue. Bring the facts. You know, we bring, and, and use the tools. You know, so um, we're going to go and we'll finish um, um, what he was helping us with, and I really appreciate that. You know, yeah. Yes. Now, free white persons is a legal status. Now, again, when you when you talk to Europeans, when you talk to Europeans, uh, and they recognize that you actually know something, they'll tell you the stuff themselves. The Europeans will tell you this. You don't need some so-called black leader to tell you, Europeans will talk to you when they see that you're not spooked up in this stupid color skin game that is a Jesuit operation, has no ancient order in Africa. That game is contemporary. So keep that in mind too. You know, so we need to grow up, you know, we need to grow up and get real. And this is the part he left, left out. Now, the free white persons, now you, we recognize here in um, the free white persons referred to in the Naturalization Act. So therefore, you must be familiar with the Naturalization Act in order to know what it's making reference to. So you're dealing with timeline, right? So as amended by Act July the 14th, 1870, you do the research and you'll see this where you list this as grant modified. Then, of course, you deal with the Wigamore Party and also with the um, split of the Wigamore Party. Then you have the Cotton Whigs, et cetera, and then you have the, those two sides. Then you have the Europeans wearing wigs to imitate the Moor. That's where you get Wigamore from, Europeans imitating Moors. Right to this day, you have in the judicial orders of Europe, they will wear the curly wig imitating the Moors. Why? Because the Moors that brought jurisprudence to the Europeans. It's not the Europeans' book, it's your stuff. They're ruling you with your own stuff. You can go into these big time churches, these big time mosques, <coughs> these big time temples, and these big time, any kind of organizations, you can go look at the special parking, and you'll see those badges on their car with the sphinx head and the Moorish sword above it like that with a two-edged sword. That means the subjugation of the Moabite woman, you. Everybody know that. In any secret society on planet Earth, and right in this area, for those of you who do any kind of research, go right there to George Washington's Masonic Museum, and you can see Ben Bay's <coughs> fez in there, the black fez, Ben Bay. Who's Ben Bay? You're taught in school, Ben Banneker. 
Now everybody knows his bait is bang bang. Everybody knows Elijah Pool Bay is Elijah Muhammad. It's no big deal. It's just simply the truth. You know what I mean? The deal of it is, but we were infiltrated and people had to make adjustments, you know, because they was getting murdered. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anybody found out? Just like when Malcolm made the highs, went over that white and black stuff. French Muslim, blue eyed French Muslim school, and we're coming with that white and black stuff. That's slave language. To you, Maghreb is evening Salat. To the world, Maghreb is Morocco, the most extreme West. You left home, brother. Maghreb is North America. You go look up in the dictionary. Maghreb is Morocco, the most extreme West. Not East, West. That's why the Europeans run in the world from your land. First lesson they'll get in any secret society, and anybody here is a traveling man, anybody here in the Eastern Star, Matron, et cetera, daughter of American Revolution, <laughs> not Asiatics, Europeans. <laughs> First lesson you're going to get is a root to Moabitus. Moabite is the ancient name for Al Moroccan, or what you call Moor. Moor is short, actually, for Moroccan. You know, so the concepts that people need to really understand and really get clear in your head stop getting caught in skin complexion. It has, we're not talking skin complexion, you're talking statuses and you're talking terms and classifications of words, are we clear? Yeah. And we're talking a caste system that's introduced by German Dutch masters in order to create schism with us, are we clear? And no different than someone, say, uh, who don't know their own history, right? If you, if you talk to the average brother or sister in a nation, or fruit, or something like that, and start talking about the Temple of Islam or the Temple of Allah, he look at you crooked like, you're talking something else. That's, that's where he's at. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's people, and like I'm agreeing with him, people get caught up in the names of organizations and institutions, and they identify with that. I'm not knocking that. That has nothing to do with your bloodline. It has nothing to do with your pedigree. You're who your forefathers were, having nothing to do with whether you're atheist or whether you believe in stuff. It's your mother. It's your blood. It's your pedigree. Are we clear? I was putting an addition on my brother's house years ago. Um, and I was tramming out, you know, because I took one of the garages and I made it a suite for when I'm up there so I have some place to, you know, and still going wherever or taking one of the bedrooms. I, I did one of the garages over and I made a suite there. So we put an addition on the house and so I could add the garage and then I made a cathedral ceiling. Anyway, um, <laughs> Europeans walking around with his dog, you know, it's up in New Pulse right off exit 18. And it's like a kind of like middle and upper middle class area, right? And a lot of celebrities live in that area too, right? Um, and he said, oh, Al, uh, so you're doing something new again, you know, because he had a corner property, big property. And um, he says, um, he introduced him to me, right? They worked together, because my brother worked at IBM, he, you know, designing computers. And they also worked at Hudson Electric. So he says, oh man, you're putting a, a thing on there, right? And he, and to cut through the chase, he asked why I was a bay and he was still cook. He said, because he's national. Now this is his friend. I'm telling you, we was gonna get a, a backhoe. Half an hour later, here's rumbling, they backed up a backhoe, took it up there, we didn't have to do anything. That was a European, because he knew I was a bay. He said, my wife tells about the Moors all the time. She's Italian. I give her the floor. <laughs> Third round. This is the last one? Mm -hmm. Before summary. Okay, I thought it was murder, death, homicide. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, come, I ain't come to play. I, I, I come so hyped up because I knew it was more, I anticipated the room being filled up with moors. And while I know my brother is still going to hold his position after tonight, I know you in your secret place going to say, we black. <laughs> because I'm not talking to your ideology. I'm talking to your soul. See, you could deny for the record. I know you can deny for the record. Man, I can't go on, on record agreeing with Brother Edward. But in your soul, no, you said, no, no, family, that brother right. That brother is right. Can you go to the next slide? 
Now go back, go back to. I'm gonna get back with it. Uh, go back one more. That's what I'm looking for. The more. See, because more comes from moros, the Greek term. So when we practice self-determination, which means we name ourselves and define ourselves, we're not even Moorish. Because that's a Greek term. That's a Eurocentric term. That's a white term. Prior to the Greeks calling us Moros, we never called ourselves that. You say, yes, we did. We come from Moab. We're descendants of Moab in the Bible. I'm not no descendant of Moab. I'm, a, I'm the father of civilization, not a descendant of civilization. Everybody comes from me. I don't come from anyone. I want to hope that's a critical point. And when you talk about Moab, who is Moab? Moab is a biblical character. Lot, I believe it was the prophet Lot in the Bible. One day Lot had sex with his daughters. And in that copulation, she got pregnant and had two sons, Ammon and Moab. And the people that came from this incestuous relationship, the descendants of Moab, are Moabites. That's not my origin. I can't accept that. That's not my origin in the world. As a student of history, and I know that y'all talk about old man Cush and his descendants, he's the first ones coming into Africa. Right, because they left the land, the ancient land of Canaan. That's not true. Anthropological fact, humanity originated in Africa. You got a not out of Africa theory. Because you believe that the first Moors were old man cushion ham. That's in your book. That's what you believe in. That's anthropologically not true. If that's true, you should be able to show me some older fossil remains in Canaan than the ones in Africa. We got Zanjanthropus, 1,750,000 years old. And Zanjanthropus had a mother and father. You can't show me no bones in Canaan that's older than 1,750,000 years. There go that cognitive dissonance again. Because you're upholding the ideology. In your mind, you're upholding the truth. And it only looks good in circles with people who believe like you believe. But if you come in an academic circle, we might have to question your IQ. Because you're not standing on the truth. This is an anthropological lie. You know humanity originated in Africa. You know it. In your soul, you know it. But ideologically, you can't stand on that. You can't say it. So you, go, you believe that man came into Africa from another place. You have to believe that if old man Cushion Hand were the first descendant, first one to enter and inhabit Africa. I just read that last night. Next slide, where's Albemarle? Mm -hmm. Alcamar, we need you. Okay. And I want to I want to point out another linguistic point, and I hope it'll come out in the question and answer or the sum for I hope it come out because I know what you're gonna say. I got you in the intellectual corner. I'm not gonna give up. I come to kill. You. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. I got you in an intellectual corner. So you're going to try to hop on English and stick with English. That's why I come with primary source text. So you're going to say, that's the European. What about the Arabic? We were black and Arabic. Address that. What about the Hebrew? We were black and Hebrew. Address that. What about the Medunetta? We were black and Medunetta. Address that. No, I'm not, I haven't even got to English yet because I know that's the weakest part of my argument. You're going to attack that. And I'm not coming with Eurocentricism. I'm coming with our original languages. Come on. In our original languages, we were black. We always refer to ourselves as black. And just because you experience cognitive dissonance on this issue, it doesn't change the truth. Kim, it means land of the black. It meant that 5,000 years ago, and it means that right now. Commit to mean black people. It meant that 5,000 years ago, and it means that right now. Kush mean black. It meant that 1,000 years ago, and it means that right now. Cam or ham mean black. 
You can't get around it. More means black. So you're going to defend Eurocentricism in the name of promoting freedom. And then you come talking about international. These are white folk concepts. Come on. These are white folk perspectives. International. I just showed you how a white man don't respect international law when it ain't in his favor. Did George Bush violate international law when he invaded Iraq and killed Saddam Hussein? Yes, sir. So if they'll violate international law, how can you tell me about black? We talking about status if black is non descendable I don't care about what they say. When I say black, I mean we first. When I say we black, I mean we powerful. When I say we black, I mean everybody come from us. And it's in tune with the linguistics, the history, and the law. When you talk about the, the Moors and the law and sovereignty, yeah, I don't receive any type of freedom that the, the, the average people who don't proclaim their nationality, because I, I got to talk to your, your, your cockiness. You ain't got no reparations either. No shout yes, now, sir. no shout now, family, please. No shout, that's one of the rules. So I wanted, to, I wanted to point out something linguistically. Agua, agua is Spanish for water. Is agua Spanish for water? Would anybody rebut that? And from the uh, uh, Spanish word agua, we get aqua. The English word, the English equivalent, aqua. And no one would dispute that aqua and agua is related because one is water in Spanish and one is water in English, right? No one would debate that. Latin dios, dios means God. And from the Latin or the Greek dios, we get the Latin theo. Hence theology, theological. But theo means God. There's no dispute linguistically in that, right? It's just the English equivalent. So Kemet, land of the blacks, is the Land of the blacks is the English equivalent of the metal netter. How your faculty shut down on that, but it's okay with aqua? Because you're out of your law. Your faculty shut down. You can accept the English equivalent on everything else, but when we get to something, Aswa, Arabic, your faculty shut down. What does Aswa mean in English? Black. But because you've been taught that black according to science means death, you can't even say it. You can't even stand on it. Have Moors who don't call themselves black received any type of freedom that the, other, the masses have? No. What lawsuits have the Moors won as a result of proclaiming their nationalities? Because when they're teaching our people our nationalities, they may know they're not Negro, colored people, black people, Ethiopians. Right? What lawsuits, what, what, what law has been favorable for you that we can look at and say, man, we might well proclaim our nationality. They're getting 40 acres in the mule, they're getting freedom, the police don't mess with them. Every time I look at a case, the more in jail. Arguing with the court. I ain't seen any of a bunch of YouTube cases where y'all winning. It's ideological. And somebody has to tell you it's ideological. Because you walk around like, yeah. And then everybody ain't no more, you think they deaf, dumb, and blind. With an arrogance. But it's an arrogance that's based on being an ideologue. It ain't rooted in truth. It ain't rooted in no science. It ain't rooted in linguistics. You see the grand sheik ain't addressed that primary source text piece. He ain't gonna deal with the linguistical piece because he agreed with me. Well, if he agreed with me, that means he black too. Because he said he agreed with me. And he said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, even Elijah Muhammad said so-called black, he never used black. He said so-called Negro. His landmark book was message to the, not the so-called black man. His landmark book was message to the black man in America. We've always been black. We've always been black based upon the history. We've always been black based upon the linguistics. We've always been black based upon the law. So when you deal with the slave system, of course, of course you're right. I agree with you. I'm a Moor. In the sense that Moor means black. In history, there were people in 711 AD, all that ruled Spain and Portugal and southern France, 
all the way to November 25th, 1491. Oh, yeah, I know that stuff. So in that sense, I'm a Moor, because that's my people. But in the religious, ideological sense, I'm not a Moor. Moor come from a Greek term. Moor come from a, a biblical term, because y'all don't go to Moab and act like we had Bibles in Africa. And there was a Moor's kingdom and all of us warfare. That's not true. That flag ain't no 10,000 years old. That flag ain't even 120 years old. But as an ideologue, you sleep comfortable at night believing that 10,000 years ago you had a flag. And there's no bay or eel tribe in Africa. So we just get down to the nitty gritty. Where's the bay tribe at? Yeah, I ain't found them. I, I'm, I'm an avid student. I'm, a, I'm an ardent student of history. I've never found the Bay and Eel tribe in Africa. What the Bay and Eel tribe? That's, it's religious teaching. It's religious teaching. And my mind as an intellectual would not allow me to give you a free pass when we have an intellectual conversation. It's a religious teaching. And you have to know that's a religious teaching. You can't go around telling, you ain't telling my children, you know, it's a yellow now, uh, bait tribe in Africa. Where? What part of Africa? We got to proclaim our nationality. Moorish American is not a nationality. The people in Morocco don't say they're Moorish American. They say they're Moroccan American. You want me to be something, they not even. <laughs> they not even Moorish Americans. They're Moroccan Americans. Moorish American is not a nationality. What land is Moorish? Y'all done made us too smart, Moors. Jimmy is black. Kush, black. Cam, black. Ghana, Mali, Song, Haiti. They called it the Western Sudan or Belal, Al Sudan, the land of the black. These are linguistic and historical points you can't get around. See, when I came in here, I wasn't worried because I knew that I would provide irrefutable, undeniable, undebatable information where there's nothing you can say. The most you can do is be silent. He said, man, he bit off more than he can chew. The boy jumped out there with Brother Elwood. I came to kill. We black. I came to kill that mentality, that religiosity. We are too smart in 2019 to be promoting religiosity. It's good if it floats your boat, it makes you cool, it makes you stop uh, smoking, drinking, gambling, getting your life together. Praise be to Allah. If a person worship a rock, if it make them a better person, I'm do Allah. I'm not going to worship it. If it make them better, praise be to Allah. But don't try to impose rock worship on me. That's my issue. When you tell me that, because uh, I say I'm black, as if I'm not in the pair with the, the good brothers no more, the, the, the black, Negro, Ethiopian, and color, this is not historically accurate. The people in Ethiopia are Ethiopian. And Ethiopia does not mean something divided. What language is that? Give me a reference besides Noble Ali, anywhere on earth, any reference, any reference that says Ethiopia means divided, something divided. You can't give me not one reference but Moorish literature. They got a case in it, one of his, uh, I went and looked up the case. The case don't even exist. Every time you Google a case, it goes to a, a Moor site. I said, what a real case? I went to the law book, I went to Blacks, I, I went everywhere. I said, man, these people are crazy. It's 2019, y'all people too smart for this. I don't even have no more time because I'm, I'm waiting <laughs> on the questions so I can come with some answers. Same way you say you can't find Bay, right? And Eel, right? Where do you find what nation you find X in Africa? <laughs> let's, be real. let's just be real. And if you know yourself, how you gotta how you X or X'd out? Let's use common sense. That's religious dogma. Just like he said. Now, deal, and I'll read this out. And again, 
much of the, the, the issue is still being referenced as skin, and we keep telling him that that's not what we're talking status. And for some reason, there's some kind of mental block there. <laughs> so free white persons, referred to in the Naturalization Act, as amended by Act July 14, 1870, keep those dates and time in line, um, has meaning naturally given to it when first used in one statute 103, C3, uh, meaning all persons including or belonging to the European races then commonly referred to as white and their descendants including such descendants uh, in other countries to which they have immigrated and the other countries that, that they have immigrated to because they're indigenous to nowhere, are we clear? They are the immigrants on the planet, period, are we clear? Now, free white persons, it includes all European Jews more or less uh, intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. Free white persons includes Magyars, Lops, and Finns, and the Basques and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greek, Latin, and Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily. So you can see it's a status. And the mixed Slav and Tartar uh, inhabitants of South Russia, the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Are we clear? Free white persons does not mean Caucasian race. You notice that he didn't go there. We left that out. Now, the Europeans been claiming to be white people. He's not going to write something against his own claim. It's a legal status. Are we clear? Free white persons does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan races, or Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European, Dravidian, Semitic, and Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person, then they have a <laughs> case for you to reference. So you can see it's a legal status. And so when the Europeans in the uh, Wigglemore Party call themselves white people under Horace Greeley, you know, it's where you could go west, young man, and the mummers pray they, they assemble at 6 and Moore Street in Philadelphia, and they march west, turn 90 degrees, and they stop there uh, by the battleground, which is City Hall, which is designed exactly like a mosque. Then the, the parade ends at uh, the Masonic Lodge that George Washington closed. Are we clear? So again, I cannot emphasize enough, we're not talking skin complexion, we're talking status. The issue of European occupation of all lands, what you call annexation or the annexing colonization. A colonist is to social political operations what a leech is to biology. They're blood suckers, are we clear? It's not an attitude, it's just a, a political fact. Are we clear? Race and racism is a misused word. Race is the human species. The human species is expanded into families around the planet called nations. Any major city on the planet Earth has vexillum, which is called flags that represent the mothers or the bloodline or the pedigree of peoples around the world. Though related, that is it. Are we clear? Yeah. Now, um, when we're talking uh, nationality and you're talking the Naturalization Act of 1870, this is around the time when the Europeans start claiming to be white people. It's a status issue. Now, when people are going into history and they start talking about white people and ancient this and that, they're lying because the Europeans weren't called white people. They'll tell you that. Are we clear? Plus, they were called the red people, not some in Indian is made up. That doesn't even damn exist. Are we clear? That's why sometimes, the, you know, the Al Albion hybrids are called, you know, uh, rednecks. And so when you go into the ancient world, You'll see that in the land of Angles, England is called Albion. Are we clear? When we rule. And you'll see the Renaissance, you, uh, 13th, 16th century, 12th, 
It actually was actually earlier, and Europeans them tell, uh, themselves will tell you, their foundation of civilization comes from the Moors with the Renaissance. That's why anybody that knows the history goes into the Renaissance to see what has evolved in the world of knowledge and education to this very day. Are we clear? So the deal of this, you've been marked out or written out of history, so X marks the spot. You know? And so the deal of this, people don't know themselves while saying knowing themselves. And the other deal, and it's not a criticism, and not like we're just dealing with critical analysis, right? So Islam is a creed, but Islam is also a science. You know, so you have creed principles or imagery, you know, that may be given to masses and they come from that degree, but when they become scientists, then now you you go into what is called the priesthood or an adipship. And the, those who rule never think like those who are called the followers. The followers, for the most part, have been kept in dogma systems. In other words, they've been bill payers, are we clear? One thing that gets a lot of people upset with Noah Jali is that he pulled the wool off of all secret societies and start releasing some of the secrets of the out of chambers of the world and start liberating the people. Now keep in mind, so many people have been making uh, financial self-service gain and expensive suits <laughs> under the black title, this black game, that they don't want to release that. And so everything means black all of a sudden. Now, show me dictionary on the planet Earth, an etymological dictionary on the planet Earth that backs up half of the Asiatic African words mean black. Other deal of it is the, air, the Earth, all the continents begin with A, right? <coughs> Furthermore, we call the land Asia before we call it Africa. Are we clear? Also, the ancient world of Mexico. And then when you deal with Kabah, the black stone, you'll see Aunt Hagar's grave on one side and the meteorite on one side. Meteorite remind you that we didn't all come from this planet. And Aunt Hagar's grave that's in there in Mecca, she ruled in ancient Olmec, or what you call Central America, ETC. You can go to California, any of your major museums, and you see Hammurabi Bay's Law. And you know those who know the history, this, uh, some of the problems that you have with Europeans with their anger with you today, you know, and slave is a Slovakian. It's an identity, it's not a, you know, it's a connotative use, you know, so Moors have been held to servitude, but they're not slaves, all right? Europeans are slaves, all right? And Europeans were slaves to the Moors. This is another reason you need to know your history, are we clear? And if you really wanna know, truthfully, without anger, without a bitterness and stuff like that, just talk to some European straight, and particularly some uh, Ashkenazis who claim to be Jews and are not Jews. Um, and they'll tell you bluntly, they know who you are and they know you ain't black. But it don't, they're not talking about your skin, they're talking status. I cannot emphasize that enough. They're not talking skin complexion, they're talking status. And when they're talking white, they're talking status. Now, to people who have the mentality of children, they think human beings are crayons, so you have a problem trying to get them to grow up. And they will keep talking about you know, self-esteem and the color of your skin. It's not skin complexion, it's legal status. Now, putting things in perspective, this is why you're given the Dungey case, which you have, and then you look at the law supports. Now, you notice that uh, Dungey was Portuguese. Now, Lincoln did that case five years before he was Praetor for the United States Corporation, right? Um, what you call president, but they're Praetor. That's what they really are. Um, now, the issue was his legal status. And the argument was he was more. That's what won the case. Because the black brands were designed to remove you from heritability. It's not that the word means you're not heritable. It is the tagging or the branding of people. Are we clear? It just happens to be that black is what they branded you with. And Negro is what they branded you with. You understand? And Indian is what they branded to steal your estate. It's not about your complexion of your skin. The sooner you start studying jurisprudence, you'll see that's the whole argument. And when you deal with um, international law, we know that the Europeans don't honor the law. Why do you think the Moorish movement exists? to restore the birthright. Are we clear? 
And many of you who study jurisprudence know that, that peak conscious moors have a lot of whims in the courts. Oh. They don't publish them. <laughs> they just publish the, the, the mis, uh, representations in order to intimidate others from really studying pedigree. So they can go around and call themselves X because they're scared to, to identify their nation. You ask any African, ask what with the X nation, they'll look at you like you're out for lunch, logically. And on another short, you know, a, a brother, the ambassador um, of the a brother, the brother of the ambassador of Liberia, used to call me weekly. And Abdullah will verify this. And this is back when uh, Mike was having them problems with them children when he was trying to get me to come out of California. Um, the Q used to call me every Wednesday around four o'clock on time for quite some time. And um, Merakesh used to call me from Liberia. And, you know, uh, Monroe set that up because they were trying to get to back up the so-called black diaspora thing when the Asiatics know that the Maghreb, Algiers, etc., the same soil that you find right there is in the land of flowers. Because before the earth, great earthquake, when you're talking Africa, you're standing on Africa. And the sooner our people get that out of their head that they were brought from any place, the sooner we can start solving problems. Because you're mentally disconnected. This is the reason why the Europeans can't deport you. So what they did, um, Monroe did that, and also uh, Bilbo was making these arguments before the Senate in the, uh, the 40s. You all can do the research. Because they're trying to get these people to disconnect from the land. You notice all the problems that are in our community, and particularly in this area, right? You can go down to to the, uh, to the station down there, and you'll see all these Asiatics, all kind of issues and problems, right? Why are they never deported? Because they can't deport us, because you're home. And this is demonstrated in the, um, the uh, 30s uh, movie, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, and in Dorothy, the Matriarchy, the Yellow Brick Road, your Zodiac Constitution, Emerald City, your Green Star, etc. And it must be understood with the different Moorish dynasties, yes, our flag was red, but also, the, the um, Venus has also always been the pentagram, a part of Moorish culture, including hex alpha. All that stuff belongs to you. Are we clear? Now, so when you deal with the different dynasties, also when we were going out into different areas, they would use different flags, including the white flag with the gold star in it. See, so people need to understand that. Then the human of the human family is the crescent and the star. These, that's our flag too. People need to know that. And I think a lot of times people look on the surface what they see presented in the temple and think that that's it, or think it, it's ideological. No, it's not. He gives you keys. And he also said, for those who know, the half has not been told. If I told you everything, you'd go back to sleep. Go back to that state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers. And, and for those of you, when you leave here, you know, you go find any brothers or sisters in the nation that can tell you the meaning of this fast, what those perforations mean, what the tassel means, what this ball means, what these strands mean, and the only ones that know is mostly the minister. And so they disrespect their own headdress because they don't know their own headdress. They think they're black. They're Moors. Right on. And I'll say peace. Peace. <laughs>
And he said, Islam is a, I know you, say you can't say the N word, but that's what he said, mm -hmm. it's an in religion. And he said, Islam teaches that if, if you steal, they'll chop off your hand. He said, if Negroes accept Islam, how many Negroes be walking around with no hands? <laughs> but it was the Moors, Charles, he referenced Charles the Hammer Martel, who stopped the Moors. And it was the Battle of Tours, 732 AD. 732. You know. He's going to bear witness. He's going to come right behind me and say, he's right. <laughs> In 732, they had two groups of Moors, the Almohads and the Almoravids. One were black, phenotypically, and the other one was Arabs. And the blacks went in first, conquered, invited the Arabs in because we felt they knew a little bit more Islam than us because the Prophet Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was Islam, was from Arabia. So they came in, they, had, they knew the Arabic, they knew, and so we kind of submitted to their training, right? And so Charles the Hammer Martel, they had a scorched earth policy. And that scorched earth policy was when people were invaded, anything that you couldn't take with you, you would set it on fire, destroy it, so they wouldn't have any riches. So Charles the Hammer Martel knew that the Moors were conquerors, they were used to going in and taking everything. And so he said, no, what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave some gold. We're gonna leave some treasures for them and we're gonna leave some white women. And then when the Moors got there, they weren't used to that. They were used to all the animals being dead, all the, all the, everybody gone, and the village burned down. That's what the Moors were used to when they got there seeing them white women. And a little gold, and a little riches. The Moors started fighting each other. And Charles the Hammer came down, the Franks came down and vamped down on them and crushed them. And that's why Islam didn't conquer the entire Europe. I gotta point that out. And so, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand married, uniting the kingdom of Castile and Aragon, right? And, and because the Moors had the stronghold in, in Northwest Africa, and then the other Muslims had the stronghold in what is called the Middle East today, everything you did, you had to, as a Christian European, you had to deal with the Muslims. So they didn't want to deal with the Muslims, so they wanted a new route to India to get the spices, to get the nutmeg, to get the silk. So she said, I know a guy who's an Italian named Cristobal Colon, Christopher Columbus. And she hired him and gave him the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. And he said that the earth is round, and if I sail west, I'll eventually end up in the east. Right? And he got lost. And white folk can't stand and say they lost. So he was looking for India. And so he was selling west, and he ran into some pieces. It's the West Indies. The arrogance of white folk. And it was the Moors. Had it not been for the Moors, Christopher Columbus wouldn't have been looking for a new route to India. Thus, discovering the new world, slaying the basis for the slave trade. I only one them more time. <laughs> and he's correct. He's correct. That's where slaves come from. The Moors subduing the Europeans. And keep in mind, 732 the Battle of Poitiers, uh, the Battle of Tours near Poitiers, France. The Moors are going back into their own land. This whole idea about Moors invading Spain is a misrepresentation. Europe, under Queen Europa, was ceded to the Europeans. The Europeans aren't really Europeans, I'm right clear. Right. You don't call them white people, they're Albions, they're hybrids. <laughs> they're hybrids. That's not denial. The fall of the Muslim world, so when they talk about um, uh, uh, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand uh, merging their kingdoms, Aragon and Castile, the area that the Moors ruled is Al-Andalusia. It wasn't called Spain until after their marriage. So when they talk about the Moors in Spain, that's a misrepresentation. So when you're writing history, Spain don't damn exist. It's a cover-up of Moorish history and the caliphates, and including April Fool, is when under now, uh, um, um, what's his, uh, Boadil, the king, all right, and um, the uh, sultan of the territory. Now, because because the Europeans did a, a scorched earth type policy, he um, abdicated on January the 1st um, 
1492, mm -hmm. and this is when the Red House fell. Are we clear? This is why in all your secret societies have Blue House, Red House, that they're talking about the Alhambra. And so the 1492 is the fall of the Moorish Empire, not totally, because it's still, you're still going on later on, even up to the Battle Creek, Michigan, with the Batam Ram, etc. But the deal of it is, is to understand that the European is not Aboriginal or indigenous to the planet. The Moors ain't conquered Europe. The Moors resettled Europe because these people were out of order. They were eating people and doing silly crap. You know, so the deal of it is, and then plus, you know, we were civilizing them. Are we clear? Yes. And this is where you have the ritual that they have in their secret societies or walking the sands of the desert, etc., and riding the goat and all these symbols. And even <laughs> with the so-called raising of Hiram Labiff, which is symbolic of the grand architect, we who are the fathers and the, mo the mothers and fathers of civilization. That's not a secret. However, again, our fall was us violating our own laws and rules. You're dealing with the nature of things. You understand? So when you go into history, no one's playing no ideologue like the Moors are so, you know, spotless. You're not innocent. You know, you fell because you violated divine law. Are we clear? But the Europeans honor you secretly, even when they get in their highest degrees of masonry, at least in here, in 32 and 33 degrees. They get what? The Shriners, they get uh, certificates, and they get a, a, a Moorish name, and their lodges are all Moorish names, etc. And their password is, Assalamu Alaikum. Are we clear? Everybody knows who you are. They ain't no big deal. You understand? The deal of it is the concept of us conquering Europe is a misrepresentation in history. We went back in there to put order in. Are we clear? And again, like he says, uh, Charles Martel a hammer. That's why he's called the hammer. If he hadn't defeated the Moors, etc., uh, near uh, uh, you know in the Battle of Tours near Portier, etc., yes, all of Europe would be uh, uh, Islamic today. This is, has much to do why you're mistreated today. Are we clear? All right. So know your history and know yourself. All right. So when they're saying Muslim and Moors, they're talking about all the Asiatic people. Arab is not a people. It's the nobles. It's you. Peace. Okay, family, that concludes our debate part of the evening. We're going to take a 10-minute break for you guys to, you know, stretch your legs, do a little breather, check out the business up front, and we're going to come back and do 30 minutes of question and answer. All right, thank you. Did we get peanut butter sandwiches? <laughs>
Set up for what is called his chief. So they brand you. If you didn't sue them, the next step they come will take your estate, kill the marriage, and run you out of town. It might lynch you because it takes you out of the human family. You understand what I'm saying? This is why when you go into when you go into law cases, except the you see the issue is status. Status and status. When you look at the Dred Scott case, the most important slave case ever to come before the Supreme Court. People keep talking racism, but they're talking from current perspective. The issue is plaintiff in error. Status. You know, and they won't talk about that because so many of our people today are compromised. And they make their living of this black argument. However, that same concept as we're looking at today, we apply that. It's so like so like argument, you know, this way you need to talk about whether is George Washington didn't have his eye on the same thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, they didn't. But if they can set that false paradigm up, take something out of the this is what they've done wrong. They've taken the black, black paradigms of a coping system of passive and placed it in a time period when it didn't exist. And they're arguing from that perspective. So they're calling Europeans white people. And they weren't white people. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's a legal status. So they won't talk about the Knights of Columbus who was playing coach in Philadelphia and why the mummers break it. That's the European state of the title, like the noble title, and nothing's been over two years. And so now the people don't understand it's a legal status. Conversion is the ones that help the real thing. You tell them they're skin when they know they ain't even this reflection. What so everything has to do with the state. Always the state. And then a lot of people they're going to tell people about history and then take words and phrases out of context in a time, in a context that they won't even use. You know, it's because they know the state of mind that people are in today. So when that is, that's molding the story. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. This is why I'm going to release it. I'm too. Oh, come on. Let those people know that they keep trying to get the man. We're going to get this thing started and give them the end of this. Um, um, brothers and sisters, we're going, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Y'all can talk to Todd afterwards. We're going to finish this up. Can you do it? make a little note and, and 
sign it, so I can keep this with this. Islam. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have questions and answers pertaining to the lecture that was done tonight. Don't go off, you know, with the knowledge that you know, because you know, we're going to tangent. We're going we're going to uh, answer the questions or have questions to answer pertaining to tonight. You got that? So, you? That right? I do. Let him let him get that mic right there. since the prophet was born. Right. Yes. There's a disconnect yes, in our is. communities as it relates to our character development. Yes. Which is a scientific approach yes. to achieve, achieving our God status. Um, I'm not here to debate. No, 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 no. I'm so not I'm here to, to debate. Kind of, no, I'm just trying to, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking certain assumptions that people have that God. But yeah, continue. I can explain yeah, what I mean, but I don't want to take but up ahead. too much time. Go ahead. Um, how do we get to the point where we have married science, and when I see the word science, I'm re referring to spirituality. Okay, marrying science with law, because I know this good brother was talking about um, we don't have uh, our status back. Yes. Well, our status is connected to our character development, so how do we develop our character the the ladder that was talked about by Noble Jewel. Yes, the cross step ladder. Yes, yes, in the circle seven. Yes. How do we get to rebuilding our character? Because this this conversation about um, black and more, it's on a physical level. It's not on a spiritual level. And and how do we learn the science to help us to Climb good. up that ladder. Yeah, good. Right. Uh, I'm dealing with money science right now, but the only way you can deal with money science and the reason why we're broke is because of our character development. So how do we get to that point where we're able to apply money science, apply our positions in the court system, get back the land that was stolen from us? Mm -hmm. So that's where I am. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I, I just throw that out to you all. And brother, uh, if you want, I can help you uh, assist with the Jack League case that took place in Baltimore in the 70s, where his uh, lawyer was a hustler. He got caught up. He had to come to the temple. And he learned the science and was able to um, get out of going to prison. OK? OK, brother. Let the man answer the question. All right. Now, fundamentally, you're talking logistics. Now, and this is back when you're talking etymology, right? That is the logistics of language. In all disciplines, logistic is key, right? So he's talking money. So first, you got to know what money is, right? Money, what money is, what money is not. So let's make certain things clear because there's assumptions that people have. Credit is not money. Currency is not money. 
Gold and silver coin is money, lawful money. So now people need to know that. And the science of it is that you're dealing with the cosmological culture of the ancient African Asiatic world. And that's cosmology. So Islam is cosmology for the scientists. It's a belief system like we talk in, you know, dogmatic for the general masses who are the bill payers, are we clear? And so we have a situation where the priesthood or those who had the knowledge have been actually enslaving the believers, as you would say. And this is where we are out of order. Other issue is when you talk in spirituality, then on the surface, you know, I have to take you on your word that you're talking about yoga breathing techniques, because that's what spirituality is. It's not a belief system, it ain't prayer, it ain't salat, it's breathing techniques. So when you talk in spirituality, you're talking breathing techniques. So I need to really know if, if that's what we're talking about. And so when you're talking money, you're talking about gold and silver coinage. When you're talking about getting us back to where we need to be relative to our lost estate, you're talking what you call in jurisprudence, reversion of a state. So reversion of what a state? You're talking about the lost estate that no Dwali talking about. You're talking about the lost estate, essentially, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is talking about. Same thing Marcus Garvey. This is why they were all associated. Now, when you're talking about the, the uh, uh, so-called, or you're talking about the so-called different uh, leaders um, or people that really represent the restoration of our people's estate in the modern world, then you can talk uh, Noble Dwali, uh, Marcus Garvey, and Elijah Muhammad. Not that others haven't done some things, but if you want to talk about restoration, you have to talk about those three men. Now, you have different degrees of presentment, because ultimately, the, 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 the key in law for the status of restoration, et cetera, would have to be on the national level. This is why they all implied or taught principles about nationality, although all of them go into detail about nationality, because without that is your inheritance, your inheritance is tied to that. So you're talking about reversion of a state. So now you would be making reference to the World Global Trust that was set up roughly around uh, 1492 after the Romans conquered the Alhambra, i.e. the Moors. And then the other Asiatic nations felt like dominoes, etc. And as you already know, that most of your nation states that people recognize today did not exist. So you would have to go back to that political aggregate state. And then this is uh, some of the signals that the Kenyan uh, described when he went to Hikupta and exposed that the American Constitution come from Muslim law. Then they deliberately chopped out or cropped out of the picture the trading banner, the amity banner, which is the stars and stripes, and exposed the Moorish star or the Moorish flag, which is the true national flag. That was a signal. Then uh, Michelle goes to the Alhambra. That's a signal. Then she wears a red dress. That's a signal. These are signals. Then the Jew that left his administration uh, did um, ran for uh, mayor of Chicago, which is the sister city of Mecca, right? Um, and then on the first full day of the winter solstice, he issued a proclamation telling of no Dwali, telling of these people, talking about the rights of the land, ETC. So these things must be talked about and they must be comprehended by the people because you're talking about estate. I'm clear. Can I just make a quick mention, family? If we can make our, our questions really brief as well as the responses, because we only have a half hour for question right. and answers. We can get everybody in as, as many people as we can. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Islam Dillon, uh, thank you for, for your participation. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. My question is, is there a law case that has taken place over the past 40, 50 years uh, referencing a anyone, okay, who is a, who is able to use his uh, status as being a Moor or his status as being a part of the Nation of Islam that had any dealings with the courts at all that allowed them to get out of any form of trouble. <laughs> Can I stand up and answer that? <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali uh, was the champion of the heavyweight champ of the world. And he said he wouldn't go to Vietnam because his religious belief is being a black Muslim member of the Nation of Islam. And the Supreme Court came back and ruled in favor of Muhammad Ali. Man, I'm waiting on that Moore's case myself. 
Okay, it, it, is, is, it not, is it not a fact, or is it a fact that he declared his nationality? That's right. Uh, where is that at? I'm, I'm asking. No, that's not a fact. Is Ali a Moorish title? It's not no, it's a name, and there's not, Ali is not a nationality. He's not X, he's Ali. <laughs> but there, that's not a nationality. No, no but is yeah. Ali a Moorish title? Or is no, it's not a Moorish title. It's an Arabic name that means the most high. Woo! Taj, you have it's a noble title that means most high. It is Moorish title. Yeah. Yeah. Islam, thank you. <laughs> All right, brother Abdul, who's that? This question is for Brother Edward. Can you raise your hand? Brother Edward, this question is for you. Okay. Okay. Um, you have you mentioned um, several times that you are a student of linguistics. Right. Um, and so that, therefore you are clearly aware of transliterations, sure. of reconstruction of words, yeah. cognates, various languages, language labels. My question to you is, what language label is the word black? Say it again. What language label is the word black? What language? B l a c k. The what language label? I don't understand. No, no, I'm saying. I, I I'm only I'm asking it this way because you mentioned that you're a student of linguistics. Right. And being a student of linguistics, you're clear on language labels. I'm not clear on. I don't. I'm not. a. I, I'm assuming, based on your saying, that you're a student of linguistics. Okay. I would never have posed a question to you okay. if you never said you were a student of linguistics. So I would never say language label okay. to someone like them. Okay. I'm using, I'm saying language labels to you, but you say you're a student of linguistics. Right. So I didn't, I didn't think I had to explain. You do. You do. Wasn't that clear? I didn't think I had to explain. Language label but to you. That's what I'm saying. You do. All right, do. All right. I just said Go. you do. All right. In dictionaries, you have language labels English, modern English, Old High German, Welsh. Those are language labels. That's language labels. So, what language label is the word black in English? I'm asking you, no, I'm not asking you what language label is the word black? I don't understand your What does it fall under? What language is the word black? English, Are you talking about Arabic. English? No, I'm, I'm not, I don't understand. Let's open up a dictionary. Because I didn't, I didn't come with English. I came with Arabic. I came with Hebrew. I came with, because uh, I knew you was going to go there. See, I knew you was going to go there. I've been studying you for 25 years. I knew you was going to hop on English. And go with the connotative and the denotative. That's why I didn't go no, with it. Lash, no, 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 no. But I'm addressing your question. No, 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 I didn't debate you. It's, I'm answering you. No, I'm you saying. only asked your question. The label. La what label? No, you're not answering me. I, I am answering. I'm not going to answer it your way. I'm answering it my way. Okay. When we talk about linguistics, primary source text, I dealt with Medunetta, which is a, a language of our, our people spoke. I dealt with uh, Arabic, a language our people spoke. I dealt with Hebrew, a language that our speak people spoke. And none of them was, were ever addressed. The Grand Sheikh said, he's right. Every point I make, he's right. But I guess they went over everybody's head, and nobody caught that. He's right, linguistically. So now you're trying to get, English is a bastard language. English is, I never said anything about English. I didn't stand on English because I know that's your strong point. I come at your weak point. I come at your Achilles heel. I come with primary source text. So you will come with some black and some Eurocentricism and try to show me black is deaf, black is negative. I didn't say that, brother. Hold on, 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 hold on. I asked the question, what language is the word black? That's my question. English. English. I just said that. Didn't I just say that? He never answered. No, he never answered. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. Stop. Sister, stop. Let it, let it. Sister, we ain't getting involved with it like this. Stop, stop, sister, stop. We got to keep it in order. Mm -hmm. I'm saying he never. You answered the question. I wasn't the only 
He never answered the question. You answered it. So let's make it clear. You answered the question. He answered it. After. Okay. Can we move? Can we move to the next question? Can the, did the question be answered? Hold on. Wait a minute. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Here it is. You know, this is how we act. We can't keep order. Yes, we can, we brother. Can't keep order? Yes. Well, let's keep order then. Let's keep order. That's all we got to do. Here you go, bro. That's why I'm seeing this there. In the spirit of, you know, moving ahead together. This question is to both of you guys. Uh, we live talk, in a dichotomy. Mic, bro. We live in a dichotomy. Social, legal, domestic, and international. Get in the mic, please. So uh, we have a social status, and, and I think we have a legal status. You know. Are blacks, are we blacks socially, and should we be more as legal? And just because Europeans do not honor a legal status, does that make it wrong? That's a good question. Um, can I answer? I think it was uh, Bob Bob Dick Gregory that said, legal doesn't mean right, because slavery was legal. And it doesn't mean right. And so we, we keep talking about what's legal, by whose standards? We keep using Europeans as reference points. When we talk about Eurocentric jurisprudence, you keep going back to them. Where's the self-determined, where the group at to talk about we don't care what they call us? This is what we call ourselves. Where that group at? That's my exact point. Regardless of what they call us, should we be who we are? If, if, which can be Moorish. Right. I'm and more, which can be black. I'm, 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 more, I'm a more in the sense that there were a people, phenotypically, that were black, that were called Moors. I'm a student of history. I will not deny that. And I identify with them. But there are also a group of black people that's called Kemetsu. I identify with them, too. There's also another group of black people called Kushi. I identify with them, too. Being a Moor is only a segment of our history, not the totality of our history. Is more more connected to the United States of America? Is more more connected. Do we have treaties? In the sense that Noble Drew Ali started in 1913 and brought Islam to us in America, yes. In that sense. But in the sense of, you're talking about one thing I. Should we use more as a tool? Yes. As, as a revolutionary, yeah, of course. If, man, if y'all win a case in court, I'm a more too. I'm coming right behind you on my 40 acres. We revolutionary. We, the spook who sat by the door. The revolutionary is wise enough and uses anything and everything in his arsenal to be triumphant. So being a more gonna get us a measure of freedom, I'm with that. Brother X. Next question. Brother X, question. Do you believe that in following the laws of the land, of this land, because it's a rhetorical question because I'm, com I'm coming with my question. I just wanna make sure you're in the same place. It depends. All right, so if the laws of the land say that um, if you use this tag, or if you use this, this tag puts a status on you where you are civilly dead, should we continue to use that tag? Civilly dead. Civilly dead. Well, you see, you keep putting me back with white folk. No, I'm, I'm home. Civil I mean, by who? We, 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 Civil we, by who? Question. We're, we're, we're under colonization. Okay. My first question was, do you follow the laws of the land? And I said it depends. It depends. Now, if the laws of the land say if you identify yourself as this tag, then you are civilly dead. You have, in the eyes of the law, you got no rights coming. We don't recognize you. You're not a living, breathing, sentient being. You're nothing. You're the bottom of my shoe. And if and if the law of the land says if you operate in that manner, if you if you identify yourself with that status, then this is what you get. If somebody can clearly show that to you, would you come up off of that crazy status? Well, yesterday I was on Facebook and I made. I, 
to study the, the grand sheep. I was studying the man like a boxer would study his opponent. And as I studied him, I put a post. I came up with a strong claim. I said, if he can defeat this, because I understood, I understood what his position would be. And I said, if he could defeat my argument, I'd be a more. I'm talking about a card carrying feds win more. That's how strong I am with this black thing. Like, uh, there is no, no uh, extra freedom or extra justice as a result of being a more. This is only in more scientists' <laughs> mind. It's no different. It's no different than a Christian. A Christian believes if, 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 if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you, 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 if you don't confess with your tongue and believe in your heart that he died on the cross at Calvary for you, you're not going to heaven. You're going to die. And this is the same belief system. If you don't proclaim your nationality, and you don't receive nothing different from the rest of us, the rest of the 30 to 40 million of us, there's nothing different than other than you wear fads. That's not true. I'm sorry. I'm talking about that. This question is for um, Brother Edward. Yep. And my question actually goes back to the um, word black, because you've acknowledged that black is a bat from the Basque language, which is as far back as Old English, as well as many of us have acknowledged that black is also English. So how then is Kemet or any of our ancient civilizations able to refer to us as black people if the language is modern? It's amazing to me. <laughs> it's amazing to me how we um, we don't do the same thing when we talk about ancient terms that fit us, that we like. We don't use that same type of logic. We don't use that same logic with the European term more. It is not a European term, but it's rooted in Greek. Can I, can I stand up and talk to y'all? Because I, 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 I think that um, in my humility, I don't want my strength and linguistics to get lost. I don't want my trying to be humble and be a student to make you feel that we're on the same part with this. On this subject, I'm not coming to talk. I'm coming to teach. And I'm not saying that as an arrogant posture. I'm saying that because this is something that I have devoted my life to. Are we really Moors? Are we really black? Uh, this, is, this is a serious and critical question. So I didn't just, because I'm in a nation and I, I'm brainwashed and I'm black and anything that says otherwise I reject it. That's y'all. That's not me. The primary source text, which everybody is afraid to address, says we're black. So Kim, it don't mean land of the blacks? See, on one hand, we say we want our African Center scholars to teach us our true history. Right? So Dr. Ben says it's Kim and Mean Land of the Black. John Henry Clark says Kim and Mean Land of the Black. Dr. Jacob Carruff will say Kim and Mean Land of the Black. Dr. Leonard Jeffrey say Kim and Mean. Then, then we're going to take the grand sheet and say Kim and Mean Land of the Black. And then we on some re religiosity. We arguing religiosity. We're not arguing linguistic. We're not arguing facts. We arguing religion. And every, everything we standing on is religious in nature. But you're using a, black, a word black that didn't out. come into existence until way after. And you, 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 can't, you can't be on both. If it's Middle English, if it's Old High German, you're using this word that came into existence between 1100 and 1500, and now you're taking this word and trying to define something that's thousands of years old. Can I How does that work? Can I address that going back and forth? Because ain't nobody keep the order. I'm sorry. Ain't nobody keep the order because I got to address that. Ain't nobody address that. I got to address that. Do that. Do that. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I'm not going to invest. You got it. No, no man. I, no, I'm not going to invest. Because we, we, not, we, not, we, not, we not being honest. We being, we being dogmatic. Like, Kemet really means land of the black. What does it mean? If it don't mean land of the black, what do it mean? The land of the Moors? Bye, brother. Uh, my question is for brother Doug. Um, you were speaking about uh, how you know the science and the, uh, the, the separation of the science and the dogma. Um, with with us reclaiming the land or reclaiming who we are as a, as, as royalty or, or, or heirs, how does 
But I, what, what, what is applying to me is something what this brother was talking about as well, is the science and the laws of things. To me, that's to synonymous. To, to, to know the science is to know the law. Yeah. So if, if, if black is a bastard language, and which would remove us from our heritage, like saying, you know, anytime we use any of these words, they're like trigger words that, that take us away from our Yes, it, it's designed to as cheap. So this is what you want to look up. Look up the word as cheap. As cheap? Yeah, and, and, and consider this, that in law, status and estate are equals. Look at the uh, Dred Scott case being the most important uh, servitude, which you call a slave case, ever to come before the Supreme Courts of the United States. And understand when you're dealing, and this is why you have the Dungey case, which was five years before. So if you're studying the, the, um, the uh, Dred Scott case, which is used by people around the world, not just here, dealing with the capacities and incapacities of, of, of people, particularly of African descent, you know, uh, dealing with these pejorative terms. And status for plaintiff in error is the docket case. Uh, people are caught up in thinking that human beings are crayons, keep, talk, keep talking about, they got this kind of psyche thing about skin color, when it's status. And they may think that's religion. And no one's even saying religion. No one's even talking religion. They keep saying it's religion, but it's because they don't understand bloodline, they don't understand status in the state, how things operate. As an example, um, universally on the planet Earth, when you're dealing with uh, nation states and you're dealing with the economies or the estates of beings, you're talking um, the rule, the sovereign rule around the world to preserve the nation state is called nationalization. When Hitler, um, you know, people talk about Hitler from a uh, one angle perspective, but you notice that they don't talk about that he nationalized Germany with some people who claim to be somebody they're not and was stealing all the resources. They, they stay away from that, don't they? That's right. When you talk about Chavez in Venezuela, which you, with, who they murdered, the Bush family, et cetera, you talk about nationalization. When you're talking about uh, Vincente Fox, when they introduced Clinton uh, at the United Nations and talked about the American president, and he says, I object. Yes. America's got private corporations. He's, he's, not, he's the president of the American corporation, not, not American state. He made the distinction, but you already know most of our people think America's a country. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that Europeans own. And they'll even credit the European as being American or white man when the rest of the world knows that those are statuses. And so you have the, like what you're experiencing here, the complexity of people keep talking about religion and we're not even talking religion. You know, we're talking jurisprudence and a state, because that's what is the issue. You know, the very branding of black Negro color is not anything wrong with these words, is that they're brands to remove people from their right of a state. And they want to avoid arguing that because a lot of organizations have made their livings off the poor people claiming blackness. You know, so there's, there's an economic self-serving paradigm in this and, and th there's an avoidance of dealing with the issue of status in the state because a lot of people are guilty of it. Meaning that if um, if someone says, uh, I'm, as an example, Kometan, why doesn't their nationality card say Kometan? You know, if they're, uh, if, they're, if they're Egyptian, well, why doesn't their nationality card say Egyptian? You know, the people of the land don't claim that. They, they be claiming you know, their pedigree, and most of them in the native tongue. And most of the names that are given aren't even applicable to the people, if you get the point. Furthermore, more is not a European term, nor a European name, it's not a European origin. And they keep lying about that. But we don't need to argue people, once you start doing etymological research, which is the question that was asked on the floor, which was never answered. So if I say, if, you had, if I tell you I'm a carpenter, and you asked me about a whole saw, and I said, well, explain that to me. What do you mean a whole saw? You, you say <laughs> so if you're talking linguistics, you're talking basic etymology. So if you talk about word labels, if you say what word label is black, you say middle English. Child knows that. You wouldn't ask for an explanation. You know, if you say that you're a cook, and they say, well, you know anything about yeast? Well, explain that. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, certain things are taken for granted. And what I see, I see that that is violated. And then you start talking religion when no one's bringing religion up. You know, it's like, you know, this is why we're talking. You know, so people need to know the difference between terms and pedigrees. And they keep mixing them. And I, and I see a lot of misunderstanding of the Moorish movement by keep calling the nationality a religious belief. And it's not a belief, it has nothing to do with belief at all. You know, but yet people keep saying it, you know. And so, uh, again, this is why the Pope, yeah, when you see Pope Francis even doing that letter to Obama, you know, to resolve some of these issues. When the um, special committee of 24 in 1960 for decolonization addressed this very issue, Rahm Emanuel addressed this issue with our people being moved when the so-called black leaders of Chicago keep on playing this black game. So it take a Jew to tell these people their real history, backing up everything Drew Ali said. And then these people will admit that no Drew Ali first to reestablish Islam, on the, but it ain't new. For those of you who are scholars, you already know that Matawaka was Muslim, you know? And they rewrite her as Pocahontas, even when the Europeans, you know, put her picture up in the, in the, um, in the hall of the Senate. You know, they read Islamic poems. Islam's been here for thousands of years before okay. Prophet Muhammad was on the scene. You know, so our people's concept about what all of this is is totally incorrect. However, because of a lot of our organizations and leader guys have made their finances off the people pumping this black thing, <laughs> um, it's sensitive, you know, because it's a brand. It's nothing wrong with the word. It is the misclassification which is the issue. And anyone who has you know, what you call appropriate persona status, so since we're talking jurisprudence, that is legal standing. So if one is not appropriate persona, then the barristers who really run the corporation have jurisdiction, or what you call lead. You know, so when you're talking law and history, that is a common theme around the world. It's no different anywhere else. What makes us think we're different? You know, this is why when Drali did the uh, divine warning to the nations, the first issues he talked about is the different nation states answering yeah. up the constitutional principles where we have failed. Brother, we run out of time. So sorry to cut you short. Go we gotta, yeah. we gotta keep it's it moving. Been long. I just want to uh, brother Edward, um, the lessons that he made twice about slavery, mm -hmm. and um, then he went down to the, the history of you know the battles that that, that was fought and everything. I have a question mm -hmm. as far as like. Are we, are we descendants from slave or, or POW? Are we descendants from POW? Are we descendants of slave? Well, we're descendants we're descendants from POW. Well, I mean, this this is this is semantics. This is semantics because the, if the POW got a slave name, and how do we know he got a slave name? Because you got a bay or hill on the back of it. Yeah, it wasn't no indigenous Johnson, Smith, Cole Pepper, O'Reilly, Underbrook, Oak. It wasn't no indigenous names like that. So how do we know slavery existed? If you got a bay or hill on a slave name, that, guess what it means? Your ancestors were on a slave plantation. Drew, there wasn't no Drews in Africa. Okay. What, 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 what rather you call it, P-O-W, no, 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 or, or, or slave. No, no, bro, man, we gotta move on. Whether you call it P-O-W or slave, it's semantics to me. If you say they just, they weren't slaves, they was P-O-W's, I'm cool with that. If you say they weren't P-O-W's, they were slaves, I'm cool with that. But it, it, it actually existed. Next question. for both of y'all. I want to know what what language did the Lord speak in in Morocco? See, I've been to Morocco. I've been to uh, Casablanca. I live there, and I never. If, when you go to Morocco, either you're black or you're white. So I want to know what language did the Lord speak? If we use a Greek term to define the Moors, what language did the Lord speak? That's I want to know that. He's got seven languages, he's telling me. <laughs> well, you know, the, um, in history, one thing about the Moors, when it's convenient, they'll use a, a, a part of history and associate the Moors with that, too. Like when you talk about Hannibal Barker. Hold on, hold on for one second. Stand up, brother. Him and I have been the same place. Stand up for a minute. What, what language do they speak? 
Can I can I say something? Um, uh, when we talk about nationality, I, I was kind of soft on it because I do love Noble Ali and I do refer to him as a prophet, even though I'm in the Nation of Islam, and I believe that uh, Prophet Muhammad of Arabia was born 1400 years ago. I believe he's the seal of the prophets. But in the context of our history, I understand the terminology of prophet, and so I do when I use his name, I say Prophet Noble Ali. But when you talk about nationality, if we're going to use the Eurocentric paradigm as he has been doing since 7 o'clock, um, our nationality is American. That's your nationality. Mm. We're talking about international law. Let me stand up again. Because I'm a certified paralegal, too. <laughs> when you talk about American Jewish prudence, on your passport, it says American. If you're from Mexico, you are a Mexican. If you're from Cambodia, you're a Cambodian. So if you live in America, your nationality is American. And I bet if, I bet if they catch you in Iraq somewhere, you say, I'm American, I'm American. You can say, I'm a Jewish American. You can say, I'm an American. And you want all of the benefits that come with being a citizen of America. See, one of the things that our community don't know the difference between race, ethnicity, and nationality. And so because I'm uh, soft on the, the, the noble Juali piece, because I embrace them, I, I don't attack the Moorish uh, nationality piece. But that's not true either. No people walk around calling, the Chinese don't say they're Chinese Americans. Mm -hmm. What American nation? They're Americans. What American nation? Mm -hmm. What American nation? The United States of America. Ain't no American nation. <laughs> it ain't no such thing as an American nation. The United States of America. All nations have a votes in the United Nations. What nation in the United Nations is called American nation? None. I got a question. Uh, just to your point real quick. America's a continent. United States is the first colony. Uh, yeah. China's not a continent. That's all. But, um, I'm reading from congressional records, certified documents. Which are no, America's a continent, not America. South American continent, not America. It's one big landmass. Hold on, hold on. So I got a question, I got a qualifier. So I'm reading from Congressional Records certified from the Library of Congress. Um, this is a Citizenship of the United States Expatriation, uh, 1906. This section is called Constitutionality. The question of constitu uh, constitutionality of the exter exter extraterritorial jurisdiction exercised by the United States has been raised a number of times. Uh, but may now be thought to be perfectly at rest. That the framers of the Constitution entertain no doubt as to the constitutionality of this jurisdiction would appear from the fact that two treaties confirming extraterritorial rights upon the United States were concluded almost simultaneously with the adoption of the Constitution, namely the treaty with Morocco in January 1787. So I want to say two things to that. Number one, the United States, its Constitution derived from the treaty. So anytime we talking about Moorish rights or Moorish law, it's not deriving from the United States or in 1913 with Nova Ali. We're talking, again, international law, like you said. Um, the second thing was that the treaty with peace and treaties of Morocco was 1787. The Kingdom of Morocco was founded in 1956. So you're talking two, two different jurisdictions. And something that's not fair to y'all, I'm gonna qualify my question is that you may not be aware, because you had a stance earlier that nobody, no Moors, have had any kind of remedy uh, by enforcing the Constitution. So just to be fair to you, please, if you are a declared Moor in this room, if you have any remedy enforcing the Constitution, please stand up. Right? Oh! <laughs> 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 two minutes. Two more minutes. Uh, Five more minutes. Uh, I can't speak for everybody. Uh, Great job and occupation. <laughs> Everybody has their trials and tribulations, but um, when you have faith in your creator, you do have your success. Um, me personally, I don't pay taxes to a colonial uh, in colonial I'm institution. Fine. Right, so my question to you is how are you teaching black people to enforce the Constitution for their remedy against the United States? Yes, sir. Islam, bro. <laughs> I don't want to misquote you. 
how am I teaching my people about the Constitution? To enforce the Constitution. I don't give a damn about the Constitution. Oh, that ain't my job to enforce the Constitution. My job is to wake you up. Black people spend $1.1 trillion annually. If we were just unified, we can build up, we would end unemployment among ourselves. We would end uh, 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 the youngest out there killing one another. If we would set up schools, set up our own schools, set up our own banks, set up our, buy our own farmland, where we can clothe ourselves, feed ourselves, do for ourselves. And then when we, once we do that, then we organize Mook, Mook, Ray, Ray, and Little Man, because they already got guns and they're crazy. That's our army. Them uh, vice lords, them GDs, them uh, uh, L. Rookins. That's, that's, our, that's our army. That's the standing army of our independence. Right, we, we, we organize them. And, and that's how we get free. See, we don't have to go to white folks to get free. You got in your mind that the boss got to let you go. Hmm. Right here, bro. No, 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 no. We got to go. Um, we got one more question after this. After this. He got to handle this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, El Hajj means the pilgrim. So after making this pilgrimage to Mecca, anyone that goes to Mecca becomes El Hajj. That's the title that's added on your name as a result of going to Mecca. Anybody that's been to Mecca is El Hajj. And Malik Shabazz. Oh, I'm glad that I get the opportunity to stand up again. That's a name that Malcolm didn't choose for himself. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave him that name. Just like there was a guy named Louis X. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad named him Louis Farrakhan. Minister Malcolm was named Malcolm Shabazz. It was on his passport while he was still in the nation. Know your history. Oh, oh, and Khalid Muhammad. Everybody in the nation say they're more. It's just that we don't interact and don't really know each other. I'm a Moor. So that ain't nothing. Why they call it Muhammad, call himself a Moor? Everybody in the nation say they Moors. Right, yeah. Question for Bob. Um, Final question. Final question. Um, in October, and I, July 1995, at Columbus, Ohio, Louis Farrakhan said to over 10,000 people in the audience that black, is used for inanimate objects. Inanimate objects. Inanimate, inanimate objects. Negro Shabato, black shoe. Mm -hmm. When you talk about human beings, use another name. What ain't those? Why did Farrakhan make that statement? You want to ask me a creative straw, a straw man argue. I didn't hear him say that. You want me to address some ghost facts? You too. Yeah, Farrakhan. <laughs> Islam, Islam. I'm going to be so strong on this one. If you show me that, I'm going to join the Moors. <laughs> yeah. no, don't, don't twist it. Don't interpret it. Don't interpret it. I know, I know you're jumping up there. It's out there. It's out there. It's out there. It's out there. I'm the wrong But Hey, look, one thing, one thing I want to say. This, this, was, uh, this was a well, uh, I, I like this. And I hope, you know, you got people out there that's seen this on social media, and they'll be able to pick through and see what was talked about through the whole uh, lecture. They're going to see what was talked about. And it stayed on one side of a, of a lecture when things was talked. But I want to say this, man, that just like in the Bible, we say, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Mm. I did things as a child, but when I became an adult, I put childish things away. Man, we got to stop believing in people that never existed. I've been Muslim for like 25 years, and I speak Arabic too. But one thing that got me out of that deen is, man, none of them people existed. Prophet Muhammad ain't exist, or Adam and Eve ain't, didn't exist, and we keep talking about these people that never existed. They never existed, man, straight up. So we gotta get off of that. And I heard you know, people talking about Prophet Muhammad, 
but he never existed. So here it is, man. We still living a big lie. Wow. Every day. Can I respond to that? No, man. We got. We got. <laughs> huh? Peace and blessings, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, I took a long flight here, man, to support Brother Taj, and I was tired. A six-hour flight and a three hours riding here in the car. Literally. Mm. I, I, and I'm actually leaving for another six-hour flight overseas on Thursday. I'm going to, um, I'll be in Spain, from Spain to Morocco for like two, about two weeks, and from Morocco I'll be in London. So when I hear people speak about the Moors, I just got back from um, Spain and Portugal in August. Um, it, it's a lot of things that I would love to address with y'all, address to y'all, man, because I heard the brother, and, I, and I'm looking for the believers, number one. If you if you in the nation, because I am in the nation of Islam also, I know, don't get it twisted, because the nation of Islam only means nation of peace. And my brother is from Elijah Farrakhan to brother Mustafa, the supreme captain of the nation of Islam, which I'm in Savior's Day every year. And anybody who follows me know I'm at Savior's Day. There are the things that they share with me that most brothers in the nation don't even know. So when people say that the minister, um, when he talked about Negro Sebato, I sat with the minister's sons. I sat there and they told me why he can't say it. Because when you have a, gr a group of people that you've been telling something for so long, what do you think that would do if you told them who they really are right now? It'll be turncoats if everybody trying to turn on you. I just left California where I live at. And he was talking about what we need to do as our people. Nipsey Hussle did it. This brother right here, I, I met this brother on many occasions. I was there that day he got killed. He took a mall and hired our people. Our people, he never left the hood, but when you're doing something for your people, it's the ones that look like you and I, you have to watch out for. How can you give commentary? So it's a whole lot that's happening, people. Even with Brother Taj, and this is why I said I will come here and support, because I've been rolling with Taj for 20 years and Brother Abdullah for 20 years. But I see things different. As you travel, you see things differently. Okay, we gotta wrap it up. Yeah, we, gotta, yeah, we gotta wrap it up. Yeah. But I yeah, wanna thank yeah, everybody yeah, for coming. Yeah. Give Islam to Islam. both of the brothers right here. Yeah. Good job. No, I was but I love it. Yeah, man, we ain't trying to it. It is biased. Everybody's all the more.